Are we live? Are we live? Fantastic. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Uh, you may have noticed the research jumped ahead just a little bit. Just been doing some cleanup uh, between streams. I've got rather a lot of deconstruction orders for the bots to follow right now. Uh, it's actually gotten to the point where they are not necessarily so responsive when we give them more deconstruction orders. So probably a good idea to uh, let them finish what they're doing before we give them too much else to worry about. Um, but yeah, thought it's about time to claw back a couple of UPS um, by removing all of that old uh, stuff. Which spider is still full here? Is it this one? Nope. I think I had it a second ago. Or perhaps not. There we go. Okay. Uh, so once the bots have caught up with that, which shouldn't be very long, let's send them back out into the wilderness. Pick up all this old stuff. And I'm sure by the time... I don't know, actually. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in some of these chests, so they're pretty... Probably going to be pretty full by the time they come back here. Uh, also, we've been deconstructing old stuff on Nalvis. The uh, the old sushi for the uh, delivery cannons aimed at orbit has been removed. Uh, we've got... what is going on? Oh, I see. No, that's good, actually. This is actually... A, this whole robot network here is actually for cleanup. Um, have we switched this off? Yeah, we have. Let's just remove these stations to make that perfectly clear. And check over here as well. Right, so... I think this is uh, actually the last couple of old Omni smelters that we need to remove. Not counting these ones that I've already queued up for removal, although there's often a little bit of power cable or something missing that makes it require attention. Uh, but yeah, that is getting piled away. Um, we've got a whole lot of old builds still that use way more assembly machines than they would need to... Did I switch this off? What's going on here? Uh, it's actually got resources. Oh, okay. Never mind. It's because of the output is balanced here and the input doesn't all merge and then split. Hey Green Mango, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, but yeah, we've already got our UPS creeping back up to... I think it did get to 23 before I did any of this sometimes, uh, but it is already getting back to 23 more consistently. We've also got our old main bus base here to deconstruct, although I don't see a whole lot of motion here, so I don't know exactly how uh, UPS costly that would... Wow. Uh, how UPS costly that would be. But in any case, no matter how well optimized it is, um, it's got to be non-zero, right? Uh, I've also deconstructed the old 
nuclear power plants. And we're just going to add more of these if we have to. Uh, so basically we're getting all of our power from solar, directly or indirectly. Um, I was actually a little sad. It doesn't matter too much as long as we have enough solar power, like direct solar power. Uh, which we have quite a lot of. A lot of this has been marked for upgrade, but we never got around to it. Partly because the spiders are... Uh, the bots are terribly non-responsive to upgrade planners when there's lots of them. Also, we have to get the spiders to walk a long way to take a pass at this. Um, but as long as we do have quite a lot of direct uh, solar power on Nautis, it doesn't matter too much. But much to my dismay, I did find that the temperature during the night when this is actually active, um, the temperature at the end of these heat pipes does actually drop, even though we've got 10,000 degrees Celsius here and it barely drops at all. Although this is supposed to be 2.4, no, how much is it? Yeah, 2.4 gigawatts, 240 heat exchanges, uh, times 10 megawatts, uh, 2400 megawatts, 2.4 gigawatts. Uh, the amount that we're beaming to it, let's see, is it this one? That is Pentium. Here we go. These three are aimed at Nalvis. So we're putting in 4 gigawatts. To each of these with uh, four energy beam injectors. Uh, emitter strength 4 gigawatts, transmission efficiency 62.28%. Should be more than 2.4 gigawatts. And yet. At the destination, when these things fire up during the night, I did see the temperature drop here slightly. Uh, and also... I did, uh, I did run experiments with this when I designed it in the sandbox. Um, and it appeared to be working at full capacity. Um like continuously and yet in the actual game uh, when this actually kicks in at night to compensate for the lack of direct solar power we actually see the temperature dropping at the ends of these heat pipes I'm not sure why that is um, but functionally it gets the job done as long as this isn't our only power source this is basically to get us through the night uh, it's not really a problem. Those three are probably still sufficient to get us uh, through the night with none of our uh, existing nuclear power plants that we had because all of the steam turbines, all of the steam turbines were turning pretty slowly. Um, Last I checked when they had to kick in. Alright, let's deconstruct all of this stuff as well. A hey, Ben Wu. Good to see you again. A oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um alright, so We've been anchored, well not anchored, but we've been at Hienu for a minute. The only reason I haven't gone ahead and done this is because I was going to do it on stream. We have 33% bite a threat. Uh, let's find exactly where the, uh, the structure is. So we don't have to look around for it. Unfortunately, this stuff isn't organized alphabetically or anything. There, there it is. Tien, Tienu. 
Doing well enough. Finally escaped to the surface of Nalbus. Nice. And immediately installed the Piccadilly's mod. Thanks for pointing that one out. It's a good one, isn't it? Absolutely one of my favorite cannot live without kind of mods. Uh, it seems like there's basically no biters um, near the center of the planet here. I'll make sure there's none too close to the pyramid. And we should be able to just land right next to it. Cool. Anchor. Oh, that is so dark. Oh, no. I don't want to... Uh, how about here? kind of don't want to destroy every little bit of landscape, you know? Alright, let's check. We've got our lasers. We've got our shields. We've got our legs. We don't really need anything else. Luckily, the biters can't actually go outside. And uh, we clear. Pretty much. Efficiency 9. Sure. Let's go outside so the janitor can do their job. Thank you, janitor. And we'll grab a screenshot. Uh, close my paint program. There we go. What's the planet called again? TNEU. Still got half of our tanks of antimatter. Let's see who else. Well, not who else. Let's see where else we're visiting before we go uh, back home. There should be nothing on these little moons. Uh, Heliolite we've been to, and it doesn't have a, a structure anyway. And Eleusis is also not what we're looking for. T-E-I-N-E-O. Alright, let's grab a cut of that. T-E-I-N-E-O. Um, -E -E Fantastic. Throw that on the Discord so I don't have to remember it later. Whoops. It was T-E-I-N-E-O, right? T-I-E-N-E-O. Okay, whoops. I thought that was weird. And... Move that in here. Alright, let's move on. Uh, so we're in this at the moment. I guess, depending on how, depending on what is here, we might, uh, we've already visited Sanj. We might have enough fuel to go to Angolus. This is 4789 radius, that's fine. Uh, we can probably hit up these two. I mean, I'm sure we can, and then we'll see how much fuel we have left. So we're going to Renoto. Away we go. We're already at 50 speed. Jeez, these antimatter engines are amazing. 104. What was our top speed earlier? Like 240 almost? Uh, so our ETA is going to be less than 5 minutes. Okay, moving right along. Uh, I believe we have everything we need to actually start working on the tier 2 deep space science packs. Uh, yep, there's our broad deep space catalogs. So we need annihilation data, hyperlattice data, 
singularity data and time space anomaly. Oh, that's right. We already did. We actually did annihilation here already. Uh, and I was going to do. What is it called? Um, time space anomaly data here with uh, some sushi. Uh, but at the time I didn't quite feel like playing with the belt spaghetti to try and make it work. Why don't we do that now? Um, I think our construction spiders... Oh, they've actually come back already. This one is looking a bit full, though. I should really make... Hmm. I need to... The, uh, the trouble is, without a mod, I need to personally go back to orbit. Uh, to make some more construction spiders to have a different... A different group of them. Um, because I can't actually deploy them. I, I, the, the main thing is I can't pl place them down and I can't put power armor stuff in their grid without physically being there. Um, we'll head over here for now. So, what do we have here? We've got a bottleneck of 50%, and then 50% of that is also recycled. So this right here is 25% of whatever comes in this way. If we also limit a resource to only using half of this belt, then we're going to get one-eighth of the belt uh, for up to two resources on this output right here. We have five input resources. All at the same ratio. Except it's going to be a lot more Naquium cubes because we get to recycle the other ones some of the time. So I think what I'll do is... Hmm. Now that I look at it, I think I probably should have put Naquium cubes on their own belt. We could still do that. Um, just have to swap these two around, basically. Let's just double check all of that. So the filters, we can see what they're doing. Um, and these ones are set to that. That seems fine. Okay, so that means we've got a half belt for this, a half belt for that, a half belt for this, half belt for that. I think we just need two of these things um, in order to get one eighth for one, two, three, four items. And then uh, this can be on its own belt. We'll probably need to limit that though. The whole thing was like 4 per second, right? Yeah, we're getting 4 per second time space anomaly data. We also get blank data cards out of it. And junk data cards and broken data cards. My Claire, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's your stream today? Welcome on in, raiders. Hey, hey. We were just about to do some, uh, some spaghetti. Uh, not spaghetti, what am I saying? Well, it will be a little bit spaghetti. Uh, sushi. Got my base items for green science up to scale. Nice. It takes a lot to have enough green science, really. Uh, okay. So just to double check... At least you're honest, indeed. Uh, so we only need net 2.6 per second for each of these. Let's 
only look at the input though. Um, 6.666 per second for one, two, three, four, five items. Um, times five is 33. Considerably less than a full belt. We're also gonna have... We, we can kind of discount the way this is gonna recycle. Although, I guess we need to use both sides of the belt for the recycling. Otherwise, one belt is going to be way more full than the other. So what's going to be the shape of this? Um, if not for that two tiles there, I might have just snaked it through the whole thing. We could still do that. What if we do something like this? And... We could actually just output everything that isn't part of the input onto different belts. That, that'll be a whole lot easier. Okay. I think I like where this is going. Uh, let's get some... Well, first of all, that goes there. Let's get some pipes in place so that we're not gonna run out of space or anything. And... I think we'll... That'll be the same on every side. Oh. Right. Uh, shouldn't be too difficult to find room where the beacon is. Uh, I think. For our output pipes. Let's see. So we want time space anomaly data. Blank data card, junk data card, broken data card. Those are all going onto the output belt. We're going to need some filter inserters. Um, and that's going to look like this. Time space anomaly data. Blank. Junk. And broken. So if that goes there, this goes here. This goes here, this goes here. Uh, we should hopefully have... Hmm. I guess I could unite the fluid output like so. How many tiles? 13. Uh, that's 9 and, and 5, is it? No. 14. Derp. Uh, 7 and 6. There's not, 13 is not a great number for 3, 5, 7, and 9 to go into. Uh, I suppose it's got to be 7 and a couple of 3s. But anyway, actually I want to see how... Neatly, I can fit things together like so. That might be better. 9, 10, 11, 12. That'll do. And then... Connect that on the other end as well. So all of this output fluid should be connected. And we don't have to have we don't have to worry about some pipe spaghetti in the middle here. That should be fine. Um, alright, so let's suppose we do it like that. I 
and we could put, you know what, I will. Uh, the easiest way to do this part, oh, sorry, not like that. Uh, I might keep the inputs here, and we could do blacklist for those same items like this. Hey, Veldak. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we could just hit blacklist for this, but I think it's going to be a lot more clear what's going on if we have to look at this again. Uh, if we go for a whitelist of all of the inputs, which we've got just enough room for uh, on the filter inserter because it has five slots. Whiskers, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Negative pressure, micro black hole, negative... There it is, micro black hole, and a zero point energy data. So whitelist those things back onto the belt. And that's going to go here. And for input, it's just some fast inserters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fantastic. Copy that over here. Um, there's not really a neat way to do this. We're not, even though we're not using a lot of throughput here. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, and that's it. Two, eight items per second need to go down this way. That's less than half a belt. I could do it like this. That looks terrible, but what can you do? Uh, I could also bring this up this way. Bring it down here. It's still only like 16 items, right? So it's actually still only uh, less than half a belt of outputs. But this just looks neater. That's the only reason I'm doing it. Okay. Uh, we can put this a little bit closer. We will be needing more space to deal with the input loop. What are these bots doing? Why is no one picking this up? Well. Okay. So, I'm seriously confused as to... Oh, I get it. There's like a million things marked for deconstruction. So it's taking a long time... In order to not slow the game down, the game is spreading those orders out. Uh, and because we've got so many things marked for deconstruction, it's taking a really long time for those orders to, to come around. Okay, I should try to avoid using deconstruction then. Uh, deconstruction planner. I don't think we're going to be... Putting these items on separate belts. Um, so yeah, if two of these on separate sides of the belt go into one of these uh, one eight 
uh, one eighth splitters, half and half again. Well, no, it's one fourth. Except if if they're only taking up half a belt in the first place, then each item will be one eighth of a belt when it comes out here. Um. So we're gonna have these two items go into one of these. These two items go into one of these. Uh, and this one can just merge in on its own, except I want to limit it to uh, probably an eighth of a belt as well. Um, that's actually... Wait, is that too slow? 5.63. Hold on. We only actually need 2.66 of each of these per second, but 6.66 for the Naquim cubes. So it'll be okay to limit these to one eighth of a belt each, but the Naquim cubes themselves... Uh, let's see. We could put it down to a quarter, but if we go to an eighth, it's too slow. Uh, so this limits it to 50%, and 50% again. Yeah, we can just use another one of these and put it on both sides of the belt. That'll be fine. Although, with the shape of our output here, it's only going to put it on one side of the belt. So we'll do this. And then... I might turn this belt around. So it's going uh, counterclockwise. Because with the shape, with the place that I put these, we want... Uh, let's see. If all of these things are being recycled... Uh, that complicates things slightly, actually, because... What we did back here, um, one of these machines is just specific to one resource, so we filter something off and then it goes that way, but if we've got uh, two resources going into each of these, that's going to be a little bit complicated. I could just add something like this. And, for example, negative pressure data goes on this side of the belt. So, uh, the right side facing south, or the left side from our perspective. So whenever it gets recycled, no matter which side of the belt it was already on. Yeah, when negative pressure and gravitational lensing data comes in here, we're going to get grav on this side, negative on this side. That's the way it's going to come in in the first place. Let's just double check that. Uh... Yeah, negative pressure is on the right side of the belt. Grav on the left side. So, this going in like so should be fine. It's going to be a little bit of a pain to... filter... 
both of those resources off of the main belt. I guess we'll just need that many more splitters. So it'll look like, uh... well, let's say the main... I don't want to draw out more stuff because the deconstruction is taking 600,000 years. Uh, it's getting to be a problem. Oh, we're here already? Cool. Let's do that. Renoto. I think I may have forgotten to delete surface back here. Where was it? Tienio. Okay. Delete surface. We don't need that anymore. Renoto has almost no biters. It's just got biter medias. And we can jump straight to uh, the structure here. No biters in sight. I hope. Yeah, I think... Oh, there's a, there's a worm. I was going to say, I think 1% means there's actually no biters on the planet. Um... But they can be dropped in by the biter meteors. But I guess there would have to be some uh, enemies on the world gem. Otherwise you'd just be able to immediately confirm hostile extinction as soon as you scanned it. If you scanned it quick enough. Although, I guess that doesn't even matter. If there's Biter Meteors, the minimum... The minimum, minimum threat is 1%. Alright, grab this free speed module. Step outside for the janitor. Janitor did a good job. Thank you, janitor. And... Take a little screenshot of this. Now, what's this planet called again? Whoops. Renato or something? Uh, let's go outside. And take off as soon as possible. On to the next one. That looks kind of like water. Uh, Crothorn. Let's just check our fuel. Our fuel is not that low. I think Crothorn will be the last one we do, though, before we head back. C uh, C R O is wrong. C H R O. See how much our fuel goes down. 9.5. Yeah, I think it should be safe if we just do this one last trip. I'm pr pretty sure. Alright, that was R I N O T O. Rinoto. Oh, I've been saving those as JPEGs. Uh, whoops. Save as JPEG. There we go. And then throw that in the mysteries folder. TNEO. Oh, that was the last one. Whoops. R-I-N-O-T-O. Okay. We're actually like halfway there already. Ked Vedek, thank you for the follow. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, back to trying to design this, uh, 
uh, sushi, even though the bots won't deconstruct things. Hmm. That really is a problem. I'll have to come over here personally. Maybe I could mark fewer things for deconstruction at a time. I might have to at this rate. Uh, meanwhile on Nervous, the bots don't seem to be struggling with that. But I see hardly any motion in Nervous Orbit with the bots. In fact, I see no motion uh, with the bots deconstructing all this. So why don't I just... I've got a filter so that we deconstruct... Um, Everything except for power poles and robopods and so on. Um, let me just mark that for deconstruction so the belts stop moving. So what I might do is stop marking all of this for deconstruction for the moment. And hopefully the bots will, I mean they should, immediately become a lot more responsive in deconstructing this stuff. Cool. Now then. We basically need, let's move, let's put this one here. Get rid of that. And this one. This isn't the final shape of it. I just want to be able to wrap my head around it more easily. Uh, so this one we've got... Uh, zero point data on the right. And as for the cubes, I want them... They need their own one of these as well. I don't think we need these pipes on both sides, do we? So let's get rid of that going to give us more space. And I'll remove that belt for now. I think we'll probably reverse this belt actually. Make it go uh, counterclockwise. Also, this can take up less space. We could make it tighter than that, but there's probably no need. So, I guess I'll just disconnect those for now. And we're going to need to filter out two different resources. This splitter having the settings here might become a bit redundant. Because we're going to need to... That might be too close, actually. Let's move this out of the way for the moment. And we're going to need a splitter. I want to do it in a pattern that we can repeat. I think it's going to just have to look something like this. We 
we need two specific resources taken off the belt. So, for example, which one's on the right? Uh, negative pressure data goes to the right. And then gravitational lensing data will be on the left side of the belt. And then we'll do the same thing over here for uh, these two resources, micro black hole and zero point energy data. Which one's on the right? Zero point energy? And micro black hole. Uh, and that should literally be everything except the Nequim cube that's on this belt, right? believe so. So I don't think we need... Was this split a part of it already for some reason? It was just there to merge. It was like this, wasn't it? Okay. These are going to be further apart, that's pretty obvious. So those already have their correct side of the belt restored. Um, that's going to merge in like so. What would be the best way to do this? Something like this, perhaps? In which case... I think we still need that much space down here. Let's say tentatively that we do this. We're going to have the original input up here. The recycle goes in here and the output goes here. And if we do another one of those... Well, let's remove that part for now. There might actually be room to do it this close together. Because we're going to have... The input here, input here. These two are going to merge. Like this. These contraptions are kind of hard to keep track of. So that goes there. Uh, this one, that's Naquim cubes. Let's move that for now. Or just ignore this part. Needs to go here. There's no way... We could, actually. If this goes in like this, this one could go in this way. And then... That merges there. I think this is right. Okay, and last but not least, uh, Naquim cube we need to limit to the exact same thing but using both sides of the belt. Uh, and we want that to merge in in exactly the same manner. So that goes there goes here. That actually fits perfectly. So we've got 
Aquatum cube coming in this way. Both sides of the belt. Limit to one quarter of a belt. And the whole thing is limiting to three quarters of a belt. One eighth, one eighth, one eighth, one eighth, and two eighths. Um, one eighth on each side of the belt. We shouldn't even need it at this point, but we could, if if only for illustrative purposes, have. Well, actually, no. There should be nothing but an aquium cube at this point on this part of the belt. I was going to put a splitter, but it's no reason. That's the. These are the only five things that we're outputting onto this belt, which is also the input belt. So these four get filtered away. Aquium cube comes back this way. Uh. I guess we could rebalance it, uh, the lanes that is. I'm not even sure that's necessary, but that's probably fine. And this goes back down here. I'm pretty sure that's it. It actually worked out relatively neat compared to what it might have been. So now we actually need to get these resources though. How many Naquium cubes do we have, I wonder? About three? Oh. Oh, I probably had this set to... No? Have we really not had any more Naquium cubes? Since I... Why do we have no Vulcanite blocks? Wait, we've got Vulcanite blocks here. What? This is... This part of the belt is... Broken. Well. There's your problem. Uh, this actually goes here. Cool. Alright, glad we double-checked that. Let's make sure that gets fixed. So we've actually got far more Naquim Cube than I thought we did. Uh, as for the other data, we should already have it. So that's good. What's the stack size? Eight, I think it is. It's the only thing we've come across with the stack size of eight. And we've only got eight chests for it. Uh, so two train loads. 160 times eight times two. 2,560. Two five sixty, and then all of these are stack size fifty. Two chests, so four train. I mean, two train loads. Two chests per cargo wagon. Uh, so we're just going to go for sixteen k for all of these. Negative pressure data. Negative sixteen k. Uh, what was next? Gravitational lensing data, and let's be absolutely sure that's what we're asking for. Fantastic. Much easier to fix. Uh, much more important to fix that problem before the train comes. Micro black hole data. And zero point energy data. And we'll name the station so that we know what it's asking for. We know where the uh, where the train is going when we look at the schedule, or at least we have some idea. Um, these two. Oh, uh, make sure that's all connected. 
properly. And I think we're ready to switch this on. Uh, I haven't actually figured it out where we're going to do the fluids yet. We're going to have a pickup station here. Uh, there's also an output... Oh, there's actually a lot of outputs. We've only got one output fluid. And we get everything else at the same rate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Wait, no, we're not outputting those recycled inputs. So we have one, two, three, four input products here. Um, just because of the volume of it, I think I will do a separate station for the junk output. And we need an input fluid station somewhere. I could actually make the main product output station also a drop-off for the time-space anomaly data. I mean, a drop-off for the super-cooled thermofluid. So let's do that. We're going to put... Uh, input fluid here. And output fluid here. I guess I'll make this a pickup plus drop off. Connect all that. We need... what's our output here? Four per second. Fantastic. So we don't really need a whole lot of storage for that. Our output it's on this bell. That doesn't quite reach, does it? Okay, so first things first. I'm going to separate the uh, time space anomaly data. And I might do something a little different from what I usually do here. We're just going to have... Some splitters. That would have to be an under. Hmm. Uh, what I wanted to do was have that go under, go to there, go to the left. I guess we could still do that. least. 
That works. Oh wait, I was going to put a splitter at the ends of all these. I'm not used to using splitters uh, for this part. do that instead of a circuit to balance it this time. Alright, so this is going to be requesting fluids and providing solids. Uh, we're going to be naming it this data card, time space anomaly data provider, and negative 273 requester. And then we just have to give it the request for thermofluid. I'm pretty sure the thermofluid was going to be pretty slow. 66 per second, so yeah, um, it's going to be totally fine if we wait till it gets as low as 20k before we summon an another train. We've already got data cards coming in. So here we have the uh, negative pressure data taking up one quarter of one side of the input belt, so that works out to one-eighth of the whole belt. And coming back this way, we make sure, uh, make absolutely sure we preserve which side of the belt it's on. And we're going to be doing the same thing here with gravitational lensing data. Perfect timing to explain it. Uh, wait. What is... Oh no, I didn't account for that. Oh no. Uh-oh. Um, mistakes were made. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I didn't account for this next bit recycling the inputs from this section. So, I think we just have to make this part go off on its own, and make this part go off on its own, and then they all come back and merge at the end. So... What's the best way to do this aesthetically? Well, it has to be after this part. Like this. So, this part's gonna merge like so. And we need another one to merge independently as well. I think doing it this way is just going to be a bit better looking slash easier to follow. Turn that around again. Where's our spiders? I think they're slightly maybe out of range for some of that. Cool. 
That should sort itself out. Although this, these couple of items going round and round in circles here will take just a little while to get back out. Um, they will get out much quicker on average if there aren't other items on this part of the belt for now. Alright, let's turn the input station back on. And yeah, that should be it, I hope. Uh, let's bump up the max trains, since we've got five different products coming in. Uh, we'll allow more than one train to come in at a time. In the long run, we don't need to. It's going to be pretty slow, but I'd rather see this uh, build up now. What do we have here? Just a handful of Naquim cubes. We've run out of Naquim plate already. Okay. Not too surprising. I wonder how close we are to getting a delivery automatically. Uh, not even a little bit. I think it all went into research. Have we got Naquim motion over here? Not really. 1.9k. Oh, here comes some more Naquim. Oh, we're only looking for 9k. Oh, wait, the stack size, though, is 10. Uh, so that's, like, several train loads. Uh, 5.63 train loads of Naquim that we're asking for. So that's more than enough to keep this in motion if we have the Naquim coming in. Hey Revan, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, um, but still, it is going to be a while before we get... Where are we? Crothan. Alright. Crothan has... 100% Biter Threat. Okay, let's be careful. There it is. And... Do we see biters right next to the pyramid? A little bit? Kind of? We can probably land a little bit to the southwest and ignore them. Yeah, that should be safe. Let's make it quick. I should have put myself right next to the door before I landed. Grab the efficiency motor. was quick, actually. Alright, let's step outside for the janitor to do their thing. Thank you, janitor. And... Screenshot. And we're gone. Thought that was a biter. Not that it matters. Alright, and we're back to Narvis Orbit. Assuming we have enough uh, energy to take off, we have way more than enough. Alright. We are getting a bit low on the antimatter stream now, though. But this is still way more than enough to get home, I'm pretty sure. C-H-R-O Thern. Paste that in here. H R O and throw it in here. 
Alright, cool. Fantastic. How long till we get back? We are creeping towards top speed and the ETA is 13 minutes. I love antimatter engines. How many deep space miners do we have coming in? Oblong 2, Oblong 3. Uh, deep space miner number 3, kind of. I don't suppose we've got any in Calidus. Oh, ob no, Oblong 1 just left. Okay. Oh, deep space miner number 4 is also leaving. Alright, so it's going to be a minute. Uh, we'll probably run out of Naquitite that we're processing before the ship comes back. I'm very much looking forward to building some antimatter ships to go get that Naquitite much, much faster. Uh, let's see how our sushi is doing. We still don't have... Oh, we've still got trains coming in. Wait, we've got five trains heading for this stop right now? We've got more negative pressure data coming. Uh, zero point energy. Micro black hole. Gravitational lensing. So the only thing we're going to be missing for a little while is Naquim Cube. But we should be able to see quite clearly that our spaghetti monstrosity combinatorless sushi thing is going to do its job quite well. Very nice. Still takes me a minute to think through this, um, but I'm getting my head around it. It's much, much, much more reliable than... And, and I don't know, I guess I would almost say easy once, like, once you get it. This is kind of easier to set up than certain other forms of sushi, arguably. And... I mean, just look at how neat and consistent this is. Literally the exact same gaps following uh, each resource over and over again. Okay. Uh, how long is it taking to... There we go. And our last resource, apart from Naquim Cube, is waiting right here. Alright, so we have uh, Annihilation data. We probably, maybe, hopefully, have Time Space Anomaly data. I haven't done the output here. Uh, we're going to have, let's see, one, two, three. Uh, three different types of junk that we have to deal with here. Because it's more than two, we're going to need a loop. We don't need the two, um, the two belts, actually. So, let's just merge that onto one. I really only had the two belts for the symmetry of it. But we've got four, eight, and twelve. Uh, blank junk and broken data cards per second coming through. It's way less than... It is like a quarter of a belt, so we definitely don't need two belts. So first of all, we're going to have a balanced, a multi-balanced loader here. And we're going to need to loop that. I might even just... Uh, 
I don't think we even need to worry about merging it properly, like preserving the side of the belt. Although we could probably make sure... If that goes on that side of the... Oh, that's unfortunate. It would have been very convenient if just with that piece of belt there we could put this on the side of the belt that's going to keep... Make sure there's room for this side. I guess we could do it like this. Uh, that by itself works, actually. Why is this facing the wrong way? So something comes in here on the far, uh, on the top side of the belt, the left side. Comes back around this way. That'll still be on the top side. It'll take priority if there's anything coming in here. So this implicitly has input priority for what's already on the loop. And then we've got... It's going to be so slow, I'm going to do stack size 1. So it's going to be perfectly balanced. And I might actually just... Remove some of these. If we have four or five uh, chests per cargo wagon, that divides perfectly evenly into 40 stacks for a cargo wagon. So we don't need to worry about the remainder. So with the stack si with the input coming in slow, we can go stack size one. With the stack size of one on the balanced loaders, we're going to get a perfectly balanced uh, set of items in chests here. And the way we are balancing multiple resources is it's actually twenty chests, isn't it? Sixteen rather. Each divided by negative sixteen gives us a negative of the average of what's in the chests. That negative comes across on this green wire. And on the red wire here, we have a positive amount of what's in the individual chest. It automatically, implicitly does addition and subtraction between those two. So if we've got greater than the average in this chest, we're going to have a positive number up here. And since we're setting blacklist, if we're above average on a resource, we're not going to pick that up. Agamor, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, so that's how we balance multiple resources with the one balance loader. Uh, now we need to put it into the train. Um... We can have the fluids on this green wire as well. That's not going to cause any problems with this circuit because we're doing this math with... We're separately with each resource calculating the negative average. And it's when we set filters on an inserter, it's just going to ignore fluids. So we're going to connect all of that to the train stop input. Uh, provide threshold for the fluid. That is going to stay. This is our output fluid after all. Oh, I need the input fluids. That's off by one. That's perfect. I'm pretty sure we don't need a whole lot of it. 66 per second, wasn't it? Yeah, so the shape of the pipe is going to be Pretty much irrelevant. And what do we fit in here? Seven. Seems good. Could put that back a little bit just for the look of it. Okay. Mm. 
And then for the output, uh, bring this down here. Can we fit a 15? Oh, that's perfect. Lines up perfectly. Fantastic. Alright, so last but not least, we need to uh, put in exactly the right resource in exactly the right amount going into the train. Uh, to do that, we need to control the filter and the stack size on these inserters. So we're going to... whoops. Far away, away. Eight minutes. Uh, we're going to be setting stack size and set filters. Set filters, set stack size, S. I do wish you could just set the control signal to whatever the filter is for the whitelist, but unfortunately we will need an extra combinator to make this happen. Copy that across. And then the first thing we do is read the logistic train stop output. That'll give us the amount of whichever resource the train is asking for. Since we are doing math with each, uh, we're going to need to get rid of the encoded positions of cargo wagons, and locomotives, that's going to come out of this, uh, this train stop output. So we're just going to go each greater than zero output each input count. Constant combinator has negative a million of each of those. And then... Uh, thank you for the follow, Glade Song VL3. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, so we subtract what's already in the train. That's just read train contents, each times negative one. We're subtracting that from what the train is asking for. So on this green wire, we've got... Whichever type of item the train is still asking for, and the quantity. Uh, and then we go... How many chests is this? 16. So each divided by 16 uh, gives us the stack size. And we're also going to output... Uh, I'm gonna think of it. No, this is fine. We're gonna also output uh, the type of signal um, that the inserters are loading, the, the type of item the inserters are loading into the train. I might be able to save a combinator by just always feeding them the signal type from here, and then giving them the stack size, because the inserters will stop swinging anyway when the train is full. But I don't particularly want to run that experiment with something that is probably going to happen the first time when we're not looking. Uh, but yeah, the sushi input is looking very good indeed. Very, very good indeed. We just need the Naquim cubes to make this happen. Oh, and where's our fluid? Actually. Oh, the spiders just haven't built this one piece of pipe. Pretty? I know, right? It's one of the satisfactory... Uh, satisfactory? Satisfying things about Factorio is seeing the, uh, the patterns of motion that some of the builds produce. 
And this definitely tickles that part of the brain. I don't suppose... Hmm... Kinda, sorta... We've got plate here already, so... I kinda wanna prioritize the Naqueen plate next time we get a delivery to go to Naqueen cubes so that we can see this thing working. Also because we just might need a few. Naqueen cubes are what we need for the antimatter engines. So, yeah. I do want to build some ships, uh, the next version of the deep space miner ships, to use antimatter. Just so that we can get way more throughput. Uh, where is one of our deep space miners? There it is. Uh, just so that we can get way more throughput without spamming way more ships and losing a bit of UPS. Five minutes till we're there. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, so that is time space anomaly data should be complete and functional. Why don't we have... I haven't done the thermofluid input on this side. Let's do that. Uh, I could do it down here. That seems pretty sensible, actually. Something like... That's not going to be very symmetrical looking. I might just connect it up here. Yeah, I don't mind the look of that. And we can get rid of those ones. Hello again, Daniel. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Am I tempted to bring up some Naquium plate early? How much have we got? 3.8k, that's not a whole lot. Uh, stack size of 20. That is like one train load. I mean... What the hell? I want to see this stuff in motion. Away you go. Still missing one corner pipe, uh, Alex Hudson, good to see you again, oh well, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well, awesome, up here isn't it, yep, thank you, good catch, alright, while we're waiting for that, I just want to be absolutely sure, there's, I'm pretty sure there's only few places that Naquim Plate go so far, and I've switched off this one. So we should get a train delivering that uh, to make Naquim Cube shortly. Alright, what's next? Uh, we've done these we haven't done singularity data. We've done annihilation and time space, right? Annihilation data, time space data. So we've got hyper lattice and singularity. Hyper lattice is very, very straightforward. It takes a ton of Naquim plate. Singularity data... 
is a little bit more interesting. And how much goes into a cube? 16 Naquim plate. Ouch. Okay. Uh, so I wonder which one of these consumes. 24 makes 6 versus... Uh, I guess one cube, which is 16. Was it 16? One cube makes one. Singularity data. We also need entanglement data. And particle stream. But particle stream is not difficult. Uh, yeah, so this takes four Naquium plate to make one hyperlattice data, actually. It's probably considerably less. Alright. Well, we're going to do both of them shortly anyway. But... Let's put this one here. And... Singularity data goes here. Rail this way. And we're obviously placing signals right now. Apparently we don't have the belt over, I mean the rail over here. Let's get that placed. Okay. Just because this uses Naquim Cube, I feel like doing it first. It's also a more interesting recipe. Uh, so it only takes five seconds. It has a, two physical inputs. We need to recycle Naquim Cubes. Uh, two fluids in, one fluid out. And junk data out as well. What's this going to look like? Two fluids in, one fluid out. I might be tempted to steal from myself. For the shape that we're going to need for the particle colliders. Again. Beacon... Wait, what? Wide area beacon... So our recipe is... Singularity data. If we have the same, the one output fluid like so, no, I think this is going to have to be two tiles apart. Let's peek over, was it here? This is also two fluids in, one fluid out, and one junk out. It's going to be a lot like this, except we have the two inputs for solids, and we have to recycle. So it's actually going to be significantly more difficult than that one. I don't think we can be quite as uh, dense this time. How fast is this? Let's give it some modules. With tier 6s and minimum power consumption, we're looking at 0 0.62 per second for each machine, 1.2 in. It's actually 0 0.62 in per second for Naquim Cube. 
from the main input. So that is really, really slow. I could... No, I don't think that's a good idea. I could have a, like, a loop belt and put the Nequim cube on the side where the output... If we output back onto the same belt, it's going to go there. But I don't like what we would have to do in order to not jam it. I guess we could have that go around in a big loop. But usually I prefer, since I figured it out, let's do the output like so. Uh, since I figured it out, I usually prefer to do a direct swap when we have to recycle resources like this. It's a little awkward with the four tiles here, but that's not really a problem. Let's put it up here. And suppose that we had a couple more of these up here. It would have to be a couple of tiles apart. So this is probably pretty much our limit. Unless we do some machines out here as well. We might actually need to use both sides of the block for this one. I haven't done that in a little while. Okay, so Aquim Cube goes in this chest. And it's gonna be. It's gonna be so slow, and I don't think the speed matters that much anyway. Uh, judging from what I saw somewhere else, I'm not even convinced that we actually need this circuitry to make sure we don't take, for example, the uranium-235 off of this belt to put, in, uh, to put it in here. Because I think since I forget which patch, uh, because we've got these two input inserters trying to put U-235 into the machine, they're going to take turns. So... If we're recycling at 50% of the time, we shouldn't actually get a buildup of resources in here, right? Probably. It's an experiment I'd like to run, in any case. Let's see if we can do pull this off without circuitry. Alright, so that's going to go down here, a couple of tiles apart, and like so. Wait, no. Like so. And then uh, we also need to output the junk data cards along with the singularity data. What's our rate? A whopping 5 per second for each resource. Except for entanglement data, which is 10. Okay. Can we fit double this? If I put this here... We can have the antimatter... No, I mean uh, particle stream go in just like so. Except the fluid inputs for these two are opposite. 
That shouldn't be a problem though, because we don't need to output the 25 degree thermo fluid on the sides. Uh, this part, that is. We can just output that down here. That's not going to reach, is it? How many... How long does this have to be? Three tiles. We're too short. We can't go that close. Um, all of this can actually go up one tile. But I don't think it's enough. Too short, indeed. Uh, I think... One off. Okay, if I use... Excuse me. If I use a fiver here... Um... We don't necessarily have room. I think we're just going to have to move things further apart around the beacon. Make an exception with these underground pipes there. Oh, wait. No, never mind. Ah, one off. That's rude. What if we... What if we move the... Inserters... Before anything else. We'll see if we can fit them around these fibers. Uh, so that means moving all of these up a tile, which won't make a difference to how many we can fit under the beacon. Except... Uh... It needs to look like this. And it needs to swap one as well. And then we need the physical output for junk data and the final product. Hmm... Maybe... How much further apart can we put these? I don't want to have to do the outputs down the side like this, but maybe I'll have to. Or maybe a better idea would be... If I make this one, two, three, four tiles wider... One, two, three. We don't have room. Not if I want this to be repeatable on the other side of the block. Oh wait, what if I... Move these down. Well, let's get rid of that for now. Okay. And then... These could actually be closer together. Uh, we just need to have room for a chest in the middle, like this. Oh wait, no, we don't need that at all. Let's remove this for now. Would this mod be good for PvPvE? Uh... You could, I guess. I think it, if anything, it would probably be a bit too long. Okay, so the idea is we're going to do the resource swap. Let's move this over here. 
having a free-for-all across space. It sounds epic, but with the amount of time it takes um, just to get off Nelvis, I think uh, I think the gap in any couple of teams' rate of building and such would probably be a bit much to overcome. Alright, let's suppose we do this like so. Actually, you know what I want to do? Perhaps like this. This, this is starting to look better. Yeah, I like that a lot better. So we can do the resource swap between these two on the fluid input side. I like that a lot. Since there's no way we're going to fit more vertically. So then we've still got room for physical input like so. It's facing the wrong way. But it's just for illustration, regardless. Uh, physical input like so, and physical input like so. I think I like where this is going. And up here. Uh, this one will have to be a little bit different. I guess we can do those... That one on the outside. We'll put our... 25 degree thermofluid output... Like this. That doesn't quite reach. No! It's fine. That's what we'll tell ourselves. Let us know when you're streaming it. <laughs> Impressed by the size of this base? Uh, thank you, Kevin. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, that goes in the middle. Also these ones, I guess. Uh, and we also need... Fluid input, I mean output, like so. And I guess the beacon is a problem. Uh, we just need to... We just need to add some pipe down here. Let's make it a bit more consistent, like this. Okay, so we got input fluid and item recycling slash swapping on these two columns, and output fluid and physical inputs down this way. Fantastic. I think that's pretty much everything. Uh, what's our rate from this? Uh, 10 singularity data per second. 9.8 junk. Uses 20 entanglement data. I think that's probably enough. Also, I forgot that I'm going to totally move all this down because we need room for the physical inputs. It's actually... Hmm... Two fluid inputs. I think I'll do what I did last time, which I've done in a couple of places. We'll have the supercooled fluid input where we do our main output. 
And come to think of it, I forgot to check on. I don't think we got enough cubes to trigger a delivery, did we? 491. Uh, 201 in the last 10 minutes. 491 in the last 22. Okay, so that's all of them. Uh, which is... Less than half of a train load. Alright, just so that we can see the sushi probably working, hopefully. Um... I'm going to drop the provide stack threshold here temporarily. And once we get a train in motion, I'll double check where it's going first. Uh, I'll change this back. And you're going to the mall. No. Stop that. Uh, go here instead. And then here. So temporary stop right there. And then go to the nearest station named this. I'm pretty sure that name is unique. But that's our standard operating procedure. Empty cargo inventory. Once we get our Naquim cubes. I guess I could rescue a few for making um, engines. How many do we have? Like zero. Two spaceship antimatter engines, actually. And no fuel tanks? We don't have any antimatter booster tanks. Yeah, that's not quite enough. Oh, we're here. Fantastic. Let's go. I'll personally pick up a few of those Naquim cubes just so that we can make another spaceship or two. And away we go. Alright, so let's cut and paste move this down to about the middle. In fact, exactly the middle. Put the inputs in the same spot. You can be nice, nice and consistent with that now. Uh, and now all that's left is to do the train stations. Let's add some rail signals. And input station. Probably going to do the negative 273 degree fluid input down here so we can do the particle stream and these two up the top which means fluid on this side aquim cube and entanglement data start with this. Oh, what about the sushi? There's our, there's our cubes. And it's looking good. Did we get any yet? Yeah, we did. One time space anomaly data. Fantastic. Okay. 
Now the question is just, will it stand the test of time? But we don't have, wait, whoa, 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 we're actually running out of cubes already. Uh, where's my remote? There we go. Let me, let me grab some of these cubes. So we have them for spaceships. That's probably more than enough for now. Okay, I'm going to personally go back to the mall just to drop off the cubes. Uh, so we're going to do cubes here on the left. Or it's going to be the right side of the belt, actually. Equium cube equals zero. And what was the other input? Entanglement data. Entanglement data on this side. Copy that across. Whoops. And what's our rate? 10 per... 10 per second Naquium cube, 20 per second entanglement data. That's actually perfect to just put it on one belt. And our inputs are on the sides and the middle. So why don't we just do it this way? that in here. Um, we do need to split this three ways. Let's put that there, that goes there. Merge these like so. And that should be fine actually. We've actually got plenty of room uh, for this build. Not that I was worried about running out of room. I like the immersion of, I personally will do this and that. Uh, cool, thank you. Spajo, aka Geek. Good to see you again. A welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Or is it? I guess it's SP Joe. Uh, what was coming here? Naquim cubes. Naquim cubes. Are getting recycled. Should have done that before I copy pasted. It's fine. This is fine. Uh, and I guess I kind of sort of forgot the part where we need to output the final product and the junk data card. Yes, correct. Doing fine. Fantastic. Uh, we also need to deal with the fluid input. So yeah, I, w I was very wrong. We're nowhere near done with this yet. Uh, this is going to go about here. Actually, make that a 7. And minimal number of pipes. Fantastic. Oh, I don't want this to... Hmm. I want this to be theoretically that we could double it. in the same block, if I can. So... In that case, I guess... This part... Well, not like that. This goes down here. And then we... 
No, that's not quite right either. Let's start with this part. We need the negative 273 degree thermofluid to be able to go up and down here. So let's say on the left it goes up. And... Well, I guess it's going to do some kind of S-bend here. Yeah, yeah, this, this looks about right. Unfortunately, we need four tiles for that. There's no, no good way to do it. Minimum number of connections there is two. So we're going to have a little S-bend here. That's going to go like that, and that goes like that. And on this side... It's gonna go like so. There's a kind of symmetry to that, I don't mind it. Even though it's kind of squiggly. And then... I guess... I might have to move this pit, uh, this little underground here, to make these look better. It's going to go there. And that can go there. And if I really want symmetry, I would have to have extra pipes. Maybe that's not the worst. Oh, I like that better. Definitely. Even though it's not technically the best. I like the look of that much better than the alternative. I'll just double check, but I'm pretty sure the fluid that we need, the throughput is fairly low. It's 200 for the entire half block. That'll be fine. So this goes up here. And or this goes down here. It's negative 273 degree thermofluid input, which I wanted to put here, so almost certainly we'll just have that come down south. Let me line this up. Pretty sure that's right. Fantastic. So I guess we don't need that part connecting up here. This on the other hand goes down this way. Doesn't conveniently line up with anything. Actually, they're both symmetrical to this thing, so why don't we... Connect that in the middle. And what's this? Seven, eight tiles. At least it's symmetrical. Now we just have to figure out where we're doing the output, the two physical products. Oh, also, well, this is going to be easy to deal with. That just goes there. And there. And there. And come to think of it, we do actually need this to go up this way. Why don't we make that look the same? Just for the sake of consistency. Okay. Okay. 
pretty sure that is all good. Uh, procrastinating the problem a little bit longer. Let's do our particle stream inputs. Which come from this side or that side. I think by far the neatest place to deal with that is going to be about here. That'll have to do, I suppose. Uh, but that's just one side. I could connect those two down here in a similar, very similar fashion, actually. I don't see why not, unless it gets in the way of the uh, output belt. This would probably end up looking a bit neater. I could connect that pipe down here so it doesn't all have to flow this way, but you know what, I might do that actually. Get rid of this. That is two tiles, isn't it, in the middle? I guess this looks least messy. Okay. Uh, so. Physical output. That's the only problem left to solve here. Everything else is just setting up train stations and stuff. I hate to say it, but I might have to output those products this way. There's plenty of room to do it. I guess the... We'd have to have a belt out on the side like this. Unless I wanted to try and somehow squeeze the output down this way, I think that's going to end up looking significantly worse. But if I wanted to, I could do long arm like this, long arm like this, squeeze in some undergrounds, probably. But I do not want to do that. All right, why don't we throw in some underground here, maybe? So it's going to be blacklist for the Naquim cube for our output. Oh yeah, we do need to have filters for these everywhere. That doesn't exactly complicate things in the middle, since we've got plenty of space. Just something to bear in mind. Wait. I gotta be careful because the way there's one tile of like fake building up here. Looks okay. And we're just gonna do something like this.
just enough tiles there. And then underground this part. Uh, we are going to need to merge this stuff in. What's our max rate? 10 plus 10. Just slightly less than half a belt, regardless. Though I would still like to balance it. Um, so that we could speed it up just with modules. So this goes on one side of the belt. The outside. These two could go to the inside, and if this one goes to the outside, that all works out. Without a specific arbitrary uh, splitter to do the job. In fact, if I remove this, I can just put this straight here, and that'll actually be balanced. Cool. Very convenient. And then I might have to move this pipe a little bit. Hey, Krasus. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, what am I looking for here? We need a balanced loader for the final product. And I was going to do junk data card and 25 degree thermo fluid over here. Nice and easy. We kind of need a separate station for the fluid output regardless. So since it's just one solid, one fluid at this station, we don't need any fancy circuitry. Also, uh, I do need to turn these around since that's going into the train. We're going to have a splitter down this way with a filter on it. Throw in some undergrounds just to tidy things up a little bit. I am okay, how are you? After scanning Nalvas again, I forgot. I have so much water there, but removed some biter, some biter mods and UPS remains at 60 for now. Nice. I've actually been cleaning up some stuff, although uh, for the moment I removed a lot of this uh, way too many deconstruction plan, uh, like things marked for deconstruction at the same time. Because it turns out having like 10 million things marked for deconstruction at this... Why are you on manual? What? Destination for... Okay. There must have been a reason I did that at some point, but unfortunately I forgot about it. Uh, but yeah, I had way too many things marked for deconstruction all at once. So when we were building this thing over here, just marking something for deconstruction, it would take the bots a very long time to react to it. This is working. 12, 14, 13. 12, 14, 12. 12, 14, 12. 12, 14, 13. This is as balanced as it gets. Very good. Nice. Seems like our sushi is a success. This weekend I need to understand LTN and design an Omni smelter so I can understand the circuit conditions behind it. Uh, it's mostly lots and lots of really simple conditions combined. 
Although, depending on whether you're doing uh, vanilla, or if, for example, you're using a crafting combinator because you have to set recipes, um, the process of actually putting the resources into the uh, the furnaces is a little bit tricky with a vanilla style furnace because you have to be very precise about putting stuff into it otherwise it's going to get jammed but with crafting combinator it'll just vomit out um, anything that would normally have been a problem into the uh, overflow chest I'm using the crafting combinator that I originally found, indeed. Yeah, I mean, you have to for industrial furnaces. There's no choice. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of conditions here to check for are we out of iron? Uh, do we have too much iron plate? Uh, do we have vulcanite for the better recipes and so on? I just got to work out the locking condition so the recipes don't keep switching. Yeah, for that I used a timer. Um, and here we've got, this is actually from a previous design, we've got a little uh, memory cell, which we didn't use the T before. But what we did was uh, every recipe signal that the furnace might use in the Omni Smelter, We've got that set to 1 on the constant combinator. And then on this thing right here, we've got uh, if everything is equal to 1, output everything 1. So, and then we've got a little memory cell. So basically the initial state of this, which will kick in very, very quickly, is to have a memory cell with all of these values set to 1. Uh, and then we basically subtract, we send a negative signal if, for whatever reason, uh, we can't do recipe stone brick with the vulcanite block. And then I just put a timer in between these so that we only change it once every, what is it, 3,000 ticks? That might be a little bit excessive, especially as we've got faster modules now. Um, the reason for the timer is just so that we follow through on whichever recipe we're doing uh, for a while, so that we don't switch recipes too often and lose the productivity bonuses. Uh, but yeah, obviously there's lots of little details to sort out with that. Uh, I guess I probably should have managed this more carefully, but did we get... Okay, cool. We've got 13 engines and 24 uh, booster tanks. That should be fine. So we'll be able to make a few uh, next generation antimatter ships to bring us back our Naquitite. You prefer bot or belt Omni Smelter? Um, earlier on I did belts, but there's some limitations to those. I don't think I've even got... Hold on. These are actually the last couple of the old design Omni Smelters that haven't been completely deconstructed. Uh, so, as you can see, it is pretty difficult to get... With any density. Um, it's pretty difficult to get uh, all of the inputs to the Omni Smelters, uh, and at decent throughput at that. This is nowhere near enough sand to consistently make glass, but what we've got here is half a chest of each of the main um, input resources, so that while we're smelting iron, we accumulate sand uh, in this chest, for example. And then when it switches over to sand, it's got a backlog to work through. Uh, but yeah, if we wanted an Omni Smelter that could do literally every resource, I ended up... I, I did design these ones to do Naquitite, but I ended up not 
Uh, I ended up not sending Nacrotite powder here, Nacrium powder, by just not putting it into the rail network because I want these ones dedicated to Nacrium ingots because I don't want to lose a single bit of uh, productivity bonus when it comes to Nacrotite. But yeah, if you want. Uh, if you want to make an Omni Smelter that will do every single recipe that comes out of the industrial furnace, uh, it's going to be pretty difficult to supply all of those with belts. Uh, and also, it's either going to have to take up quite a bit of space with the belts, or and or the throughput is going to be... Uh, pretty severely limited compared to bot spam. Also, if I'd realized sooner in this playthrough that uh, you get 50 logistic bots per uh, per robo network without any risk of them crashing, I probably... I don't know if 50 would be enough. But I, I, I may have built this one a bit differently, if I'd known that at that stage. Okay. On to this build. I think we're just about finished, hadn't we? So the final product is called Singularity Data. And we have two products that have to go here, I think. No, it was just Junk Data Cards. Well, regardless, if it was like junk and broken over here, we can solve that by just filtering singularity data on this side. Uh, and this is actually going to be... If I knew exactly where to look, there's several places I could just copy-paste this entire thing from. We've done this a number of times. Uh, that is to say, junk data card and 25 degree thermo fluid for urgent pickup hence the purple as if it's an active provider chest and these defaults all come from that little blueprint that's pretty straightforward uh, on this side, we've only got the one physical thing going to the train, so we can just do regular inserters. This is pretty much the same, except we need to request negative 273. Let me just double check. Yeah, negative 273 degree thermo fluid. And up here we need to request three things. Uh, Naquim cube, entanglement data, and uh, what is it called? Particle stream. So let's start with the cube. Actually, no, I can't remember. 1280 fits in a train. 2560 is a couple of train loads. And then entanglement. I think I keep typing entanglement. There we go. Two train loads. And last but not least, particle stream. Uh, I'll switch on the research requester again for plate. This is going to be the priority drop off for Nequim plate. So we can switch this on now. Cream cube, entanglement data, and 
article string. Should be good to go already. Well, that didn't take long. Fluid and entanglement data is on the way. And it's going to be a little while before we get our Nacrim cubes, of course. By a little while, I mean we'll probably get it before the heat death. But yeah, I think that build may be complete. That just leaves a uh, hyper lattice data. And then we'll have everything in place for tier 2 deep space science, except for some uh, neural supercomputers over here. I think it's neural that we need. Yeah, we can make it with a neural supercomputer. Same shape as the uh, deep space catalog. We need crinite rods as well as super cool thermo fluid and four types of data. And that's going to go on this side. I think I've already set these up actually. It's like leaving. That's like a present from my past self. And uh, I actually want to do what I did over here, where we'll put a very limited um, that's weird. Just the way it displays that that fluid is in there. Uh, we'll put a very limited number of neural supercomputers in here for now. How many do we have? Probably seven. Oh, okay. That's a few. I might actually put a limit on that now. Because these things are... Oh, I did put a limit on it. Using the... Uh, logistic network. So we've got 101. That's actually fantastic. Um, I'll still just bring over a few of these for the moment. I know we're not going to need them at scale for quite a while. And we need double long arms. How do we do this? Double long arms on the side. And then these in the middle. Oh yeah, that's why we did it that way. Okay, and then we're just gonna temporarily get rid of those belts as well. Actually, instead of physically removing them, I'll just rotate them like that. Cool. And then those go down here. I think this is already... I haven't updated that station properly yet. What is this? 25 degree thermofluid? I don't think I updated that part of the station name properly. There we go. Uh, so this will be... Broad Catalog of the deep space variety. Oh. And there's our machines. Gonna have to spit out a little bit of that thermo fluid temporarily. And there we go. Oh wow. We already got a trainload of annihilation data.
I guess I shouldn't be too shocked. What goes into annihilation data? Uh, particle stream, antimatter stream, and blank data cards. So it's really just the volume of fluid that is any issue with that for the moment. Yeah, we've got lots of annihilation data. Cool. What's this train doing? It's trying to drop off entanglement data, but I put these pumps around the wrong way. Do that a lot. Okay, so last data card for tier 2 deep space science. And then we really need to focus on increasing our throughput uh, for Naquium, which now that I can make a handful of antimatter ships should be a bit of fun. Oops. Spiders are placing signals right now. Okay, so what goes into this? This was the simple one that uses a lot of Naquium plate. Uh, I think this one actually might use more Naquium plate, but this is directly Naquium plate. So, nano material and blank data card is no trouble whatsoever at this stage. We just need lots of Naquium. Also, the shape of it, what's the throughput going to look like? So we need laser facilities, haven't used those in a minute. Maps? Maps. What are you looking for? Uh, Argon? You're welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Alright, so... Hyperlactus data... It's just three physical in, one physical out. Hello, hello. How fast do you individually make these? It's trying to get, if possible, the seed of the map. Um, I may have posted that somewhere, but I did recently post... Uh, in the announcements on the Discord, there's actually a link to the save file uh, fairly recently for this map. It is about half a gig, though. So many spider minions, indeed. Maholic, good to see you again. A welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so one of these gives us just under one per second... And it's only, it's actually only four Naquium plate per second, per machine. Thank you, no worries. How fast is this? Well, that's like eight per second, isn't it? Uh, three physical inputs. 1, 6, and 24. I'm almost tempted to do something fancy here, but I think we'll just, uh... be a little bit more restrained this time. Uh, how many tiles do we need here? I want the slow input in the middle and the Naquium plate close to the machines for the stack inserters. BG Nyman, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so that goes there, that goes there, and so on. 
between these eight machines, we're only looking at 7.5 blank data card per second, so that's considerably less than half a belt. 30 nacrim plate per second. Okay. And let's do the same thing on this side. And we probably, let's see, 15 per second output, 60 in, half belt, half belt, and two belts. I think I'll just do this, it can be the whole half a block build. And we can easily double it later on. And there's no side outputs at all this time, for once. Let's do our pickup station here. Requester here. And on the near side, uh, we'll do 90 per second. And on the other side, we'll do a couple of half belts. Okay. So we'll be needing... This goes here. It's actually going to be lots of extra space. The way I would have built this before UPS was getting so low is to try and double this on this side of the block and find a solution to getting 180 Naquium plate per second input from the train stop. I mean, we could still do that. Just for fun of it. What's our rate? If I double this? Uh, that is more than half a belt of blank data cards. That does change the shape of it. I guess I won't do that. How huge is your mining operation? Uh, we've got quite a few planets. And each of them has something more or less similar to this, where we've got a whole lot of core mining drills, and then a bunch of logistics so that we can get the core fragments home. A pretty typical example um, from later in the game, though, uh, Keto Bar. We've got some solar panels here, just so that it can run itself. It is a waterless planet, so... Um, we have to ship in ice to keep this working. But we've got a energy beam receiver power plant with uh, high temp turbine generators. We don't need any Naquium pipe to make the most of this, because we connect them all directly to the beam receiver, uh, and then we've just got, I guess we won't need, we won't be needing this at all, this part, in future builds, if we switch it all over to antimatter. Um, why is this full? We've got iridite core fragments everywhere. Uh, I just want to make sure my ships haven't gotten stuck somehow. Ito bar. One is heading back to Nalvis. Two is at Nalvis waiting to land. Uh, three is heading to Kito bar. Four is heading, is waiting to land at Nalvis. And five is being emptied right uh-oh. Uh-oh. I may have forgotten to whitelist 
Iridium core fragments in this particular robo network. Um, but still, we've got... Hmm. I wonder if a train is wanting to come here, but... Oh, we ran into this problem before as well. Okay, you can leave. Uh, we need to make sure that those two inserters in particular only activate when... Well, I can just copy this, actually. Uh, anything greater than zero, that's coming from the logistic train stop output, uh, which is shorthand for... A train, a LTN train is stopping at this station. So it won't shove Iridium core fragments into the trash train when and if it comes. And also we're not putting Iridium uh, core fragments into the trash. Good fix, indeed. I do love the energy beams, absolutely. Oh, for Naquitite? Uh, we've got two outposts. Our uh, first prototype over here uh, at Black Mirror. I thought it would be cool if the spaceship acts as the power plant. Um, although it didn't really... Maybe it didn't really cross my mind at the time that these this would be vulnerable to being hit by asteroids. Um when the mining ship is away. But yeah, these uh, deep space miners have energy beam receivers. So they carry, like th these things are the best batteries in the game by far. Like th the amount of energy stored in this thing when it's at maximum temperature is just gargantuan. You're gonna run out of water long before you run out of heat. Um, to use this as a power plant. Um, so these things land over there, act as the power plant, the miners do their thing. It doesn't take long uh, because the stack size is so small to fill this up. Uh, but for the second iteration over here, we've actually just got an energy beam receiver power plant as well. Uh, and it's receiving power beamed from Hankerus that we're getting from solar panels right next to the sun. Uh, and then we've got the exact same ship design landing here, dropping off sulfuric acid, dropping off ice, uh, and bots and stuff just in case, and receiving uh, Naquium, Naquitite rather. The next one I want to do uh, is just going to be pretty much the same thing, but we're going to have antimatter engines on the ships. I could try designing the next iteration of Deep Space Miner ship. Uh, to functionally be the same shape, but use antimatter engines just so that they'd be compatible with the two older uh, mines that we've got. Or I could just not worry about that. I like your compact energy beam spaceships. Might copy that for chat plates. Nice. Yeah, there's really no other option in terms of having an energy source that isn't consuming some kind of fuel. Um, and I was going to say swapping over, like having fuel control on these, uh, there's going to be a moment where it like cools down and slows down and stuff, but actually on this particular design, where I was doing kind of more or less the smallest uh, really fast player ship that I could do. Um, with the Naquium accumulators, at least, this is the this is only the equivalent of what 
six chromium accumulators, I think. Uh, 500k. No, it's five times. Yeah, this is actually like 15 uh, Naquim accumulators. But once they drop below like 90%, we put more uranium fuel cells in, and this thing doesn't slow down at all. Uh, the heat will drop down to 500 degrees after this runs out of fuel and it's still in motion. And then the moment you put nuclear fuel back in, like a second later, this is hot enough to generate steam again. The larger one was four nuclear reactors. I used nuclear reactor for net haulers in my play. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, how physically big was the ship? Because the only reason I'm using two nuclear reactors here is so that we get fuel efficiency and so that it's symmetrical. Because uh, just one of these without a neighbor bonus is actually enough to support these four uh, heat exchangers. It's like 800 size. Okay. Uh, but how many, like, uh, turbines did you have? Is what I was wondering. Six turbines. Okay. So I'm guessing two ion engines? 25k steam. Oh, as in 25,000 stored. Yeah. That's an, that's an interesting way to do it, actually. Were you... Hmm... So you had the reactors on the ship, though, right? I'm guessing. Where are we doing our outputs here? Just some long arms on this side. And short ones here. Or maybe the other way around. Was four ion engines or two? Okay. I definitely, uh, I definitely overdid power consumption on these ships, uh, the first time around. Like, if we had a couple more condenser turbines on these ships, or just one ion engine, uh, it would have been a lot more reliable, not bottlenecked on power. Okay, uh, what am I doing here? We need... oh, that's right. Uh, pretend it's 90 Naquium plate per second input. And this goes here, that goes there, that goes there. And then the other two. Let's do our filter inserters. I'll put a screenshot in the Discord. It's pretty basic ship. No worries. Fantastic. That cream plate goes here. And then the other two were nano material and blank data card. Blank. On this side, it's generic, everything equals zero, read hand contents, read belt, and they all swing at the same time. On this side, we have to make it specific. Nano material equals zero. And blank data card equals zero. And then copy that across. Uh, we only need one belt, so we're going to do the most basic of mergers here. And... Let's 
get some underground belts here. Make it nice and easy to merge these ones in. Oops. That's not going to reach, is it? Neither is that. Make sure we connect these. We are looking for plate. Whoops. Uh, nano material. Like data card. Plate. What does it stack to? Twenty. Uh, so one six three hundred twenty three thousand two hundred. 6,400 is a couple of train loads. These two I think stack to 50. Yes. Nano material. Couple of train loads. Same goes for blank data cards. And I think this one's ready. Whoops. And then... Guessing once you get starships, you don't do cargo rockets. Yeah, I've been meaning to phase all of those out. Although there are reasons, at least for a while, um, to continue to use them. If you're on a planet that's reasonably big, like Nalvis, um, and you want to send lots of stuff into orbit, um, there was a while there where we were really, really struggling with liquid rocket fuel. Because it actually takes, like, twice the amount of liquid rocket fuel to send a spaceship with the equivalent cargo capacity into orbit uh, compared to a cargo rocket. Although, you'll never have to deal with the um, cargo rocket sections, capsules, and crashing using a spaceship. Um... It is a lot of liquid rocket fuel. Uh, in a, in hindsight, I definitely wouldn't have done these double, like these pairs of spaceships like this. It just takes, it's already massive throughput if we have just one spot for these to park. They just swap places in the course of like a second. Um, but it takes a really long time to fill these up. If I had, when I designed these little shuttles, if I'd known how to use set requests and deduce how much is in the buffer chests at the time, I might have done the same thing, but set it up so that we fill one of these ships before the other. That would be pretty complicated, swapping between the two, kind of convoluted though. I think it would have been better to just build one spaceship berth per type of ship here. Dang, they are compact? Yeah, it's, uh, looking at the integrity, it's all container stress. Um, very, very, very much bottlenecked on container stress for these things. Alright, uh, where are we at? Wait, they're still deconstructing this stuff? Wow. Bearing in mind that I left this running for quite a while before the stream as well. I guess I shouldn't be that shocked. What was there before? The old uh, versions of the Omni Smelters. So there's a lot of chests full of uh, iron and copper and so on. Alright, I think I'll take a break in about five minutes. Do some words on stream. Uh, 
here we go. Now then. Oh, it's already working. I forgot I summoned those items. But we're not going to be getting the Nequium plate anytime soon. Uh, okay. And we can definitely summon more trains simultaneously as well. So we're going to put the output station down here. I already did that. We're going to do just a standard output here. It's only one output product. Very straightforward. Also, pickup stations are by far the easiest with LTN. You literally just connect it to the chests and give it a provide threshold. And the, the allowed number of uh, length of trains. I forgot what this is called. Uh, hyper lattice data. Hyper lattice data provider. I think uh, in a future playthrough, I might actually add words to these, like hyper lattice input or something. Since there's a lot of stations that share names. It feels very strange, honestly, that this is actually it. That a recipe this deep into space exploration could be this simple. Alright, let's do our output belts. It feels like we've gone back to Vanilla Factorio or something. Let's bring that... wait, what? Let's flip that around. And down here, down here, what's our rate? Uh, 15 per second, that all fits on one half belt. But we may as well merge it properly anyway, why not? Which deep space recipe are you at? Uh, Hyper Lattice Data. And this is our final build for the broad, the tier 2 uh, deep space catalog. So we're just waiting on resources to get tier 2 deep space science now. So I think the next thing I'm going to do, apart from keep deconstructing all this stuff, uh, is design some antimatter ships to do our deep space mining so we can get it significantly faster. And we'll try and crank up that Naquium throughput. Let's send the. What the? Send the construction. Wait, we've got everything we need here, right? If there's any to change, it's just a remote setting and a combinator or something, I think. Okay, uh, let's send the spiders uh, this way. I'm gonna mark a bunch of this stuff for deconstruction and get them to pick up as much of that as they can. Scaffolding spiders back to the mall. And let's get some words. How many hours are you up to now? Uh, yes. It's about a month. Uh, bearing in mind that a lot of the time it hasn't been running at full speed. Do SE require this size or 
Do you have any personal goal? Uh, honestly, I built too big. If I'd known how just how long the SE playthrough was and how low UPS would get, I probably would have built smaller. Um, but I would like to, at the end of the playthrough, uh, really crank things up and see just how high we can get. Uh, no specific goal, I just want... I guess the science builds that we've done like this, we can try and see if those can go maximum speed. Oh, I should have a recipe. No, I don't. Uh, I think the next thing I want here is Deep Space Science Pack 2. Oh, that's a little expensive. Deep Space Transport Belts. I honestly wonder at why they bother giving you this so late in the game. Like, we've we've literally built 90-something percent of everything. And then you're going to give us better belts that have longer, much, much, much longer undergrounds. Uh, I, I, I'm not about to bother upgrading any of this with the deep space belts. Just need a computer exploding emote if you're going to see your bases, indeed. Went through the same exact thing and had to abandon my run instead of fixing it. Ouch. The mod suit small, small wear footprint and use the latest version of buildings as you unlock them. Yeah. Yeah, like particularly the fact that the tier 1 to tier 2 beacons have different shapes. Um, there's a whole lot of builds that... I would have liked to build them, like, future-proof for the next tier of mod uh, beacons, but I couldn't really do that without jumping into sandbox mode to design it. Going high production works better with K2. Uh, why is that? Root class, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Rayclaw as well, welcome, welcome. The speed and prod modules make everything amazing from such few resources, yeah. Like, the way I built things before was, okay, we're not going to need to do any more red science builds. This is done, forever. But the way it works out, I need to tear this down so that I can rebuild it with fewer machines, so that our UPS doesn't keep sinking. I, I do want to do another playthrough of SE, uh, whereby I'll probably design, like, almost everything, or quite a lot of stuff, in Sandbox, before I even really start. See just how smooth of a playthrough we can do. Okay, uh, let's get the old... Words on stream started. I'm going to take a break shortly. Double check this. K2 has buildings which are faster with more module slots. Can make your builds more UPS efficient. Nice. Could squash red, green, grey and maybe blue into one rail grid? With higher speed prod modules, maybe. Alright. Time for a break. Uh, I will put on some... Uh, LTN screensaver. I did do the little experiment of... Running a deconstruction planner with radar over all of this. To see if our UPS went up. Uh, maybe I actually have to deconstruct the radars as opposed to just mark them for deconstruction but so far at least I didn't really see any improvement when I tried that but 
we want to be able to see the trains some of the time for the screensaver anyway, right? Also lets you make it very compact. Cool. All right. Uh, I'll be back in maybe five minutes or so. And for now, uh, 30 seconds, we'll start some words on stream. Back soon.
Fantastic. You'll you'll want one more. All right, let's continue then. Autopilot off. Screensaver off. Words with words on stream off stream. And where were we? Uh, we've pretty much finished tier two science. Only two more tiers to go. But first, we gotta get a lot more uh, throughput of Naquitite. What? There we go. Let's get the spiders to clean this up. And I might just jump over to uh, the super editor, actually, so that we can thoroughly test our new ship. Because otherwise that takes a while. In hindsight, I could have done this while the words on stream was playing. I guess I'll do that next time. Come on. Don't be shy. There you go. Alright, test thingy. Let's go. Oh my lord, how long is this taking? Oh, it's jumping back to the menu, that's why. Yep. Okay, so I'm still a little bit torn between building an antimatter ship with the same shape as our existing deep space miners and just building something new. I guess we can try and see what we can come up with. Where are we here? Uh, okay. Let's go back to Novice Orbit, because I sort of need to be in the ship to do this. That won't be too long. And yeah, I can't actually... I can't actually jump around uh, like this while the game is sped up because we need to have the editor window open. It's black for me? Uh, what do you mean by that? Now it's good? Okay. Oh, it was the, uh, the loading screen? Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, was I already doing this? I think I was already doing this. Like, last week. I forgot about it. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's have a look. We've got... This is the... Space Truck Mark 2. That's not the same thing. No, 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 that's not... Okay. Do I have the Deep Space Miner in here? I do. Good. I was afraid I'd have to go back for it. Uh, it is a little bit bigger. Alright, let's start building the old version here. We'll just keep that there for reference. And the easiest thing... Hmm. If this thing's going to have antimatter engines and go much faster, I don't think uh, four laser turrets 
is going to cut it. And I don't think we should bother having the media point defenses on the ship, since we're not going to do the ship as a power plant thing. Uh, the energy beam receiver and all of that can probably stay the same. We're going to have much looser power needs. And we can use all of this space for the two types of fuel, uh, just for antimatter engines now. Antimatter engine. Just a pair of the. Oh, is that the middle? That is. Oh, it's actually just one tile in the middle with these ships. Okay. Let's see. If this goes here, it's going to be a little bit awkward. The reason we need to have about the same footprint is because we've already built uh, the pickup and drop-off stations for them. Although the pickup station has a lot of flexibility, the drop-off station on Nalvis is pretty specific. I suspect... I suspect this is actually way more than enough antimatter fuel. But I would prefer if we can make sure it's overkill. Why don't we run some experiments with this much antimatter fuel and see how far it goes. So, so far it's looking like almost the exact same footprint, actually. Except we can save some hull size down the back here. We will be needing more laser turrets, though, to keep up with the speed of it. Um, I guess I won't fiddle with this at all, since the whole point of this build is that we don't have to change how we do things. I could add more storage. It depends how fast it goes. If it goes so fast that it's a problem uh, to defend it from asteroids, I could just add more containers to it. So it'll still go faster, but still eight minutes to get back. I would like to add some... Uh, where is it? Some shield projectors to this, but... It might be a bit tricky or awkward. Let's bring that out of the way. This is going to be the sulfuric acid, so... I could move that, like, to the right, but this underground pipe has to stick out right here. I might do that, actually. Let's bring this down. That goes over here. That goes here-ish. And... We could move the console around a bit if we have to. I just want to see if we can find a decent spot to put... Ideally, I'd like to do what we've done before, where we've got a couple of these shield projectors pointed at the middle. But I think that's going to be pretty tricky, uh, keeping our existing shape here. Especially since that's not going to be entirely consistent with having a middle tile. We 
What happens if we put this here? I don't think... Uh, it might actually. It wouldn't cover the whole left side, but it should cover the middle. Hmm. Can we just find more room for lasers then? I wish there was something 3x3 three three that would make sense to put in the middle here now. would we benefit from shields? I can't reach that any further. If I move this... Okay, I can't actually move this any further to the right. We're stuck with that. Once again, I find myself wishing we could rotate this more than one-eighth. But if I could put this more to the side, it would be a good fit for two of them. What if I had less water storage and we brought sulfuric acid storage down this way a bit? I wouldn't love the asymmetry of it, but... It might be worth getting shield projectors in there. Uh, once again, it all depends how fast we're going to go. If it's going to be a problem for the lasers to keep up or not. Alright, let's get back so we can give it a good test. Whoops. Only 340 UPS. Terrible. I think I do like this design, though. How fast does it go? 162. That's pretty good for something that's going to carry lots and lots of cargo. I think I kept it under a thousand. Yeah, under a thousand stress as well. So this is something we could build, like, as soon as we've got antimatter. Alright, let's park... Uh, I guess we'll park over here. Why is it moving so slowly? Oh, this, wow. Especially with that speed, that's kind of strange. Editor, should have just jumped into the map. Didn't actually put a door on this. Okay. Uh, I am curious as to... Just how far we get on just a couple of tanks of antimatter with this thing. We could probably squeeze something in here, like maybe... Not the console, I suppose. Hmm. Or storage. Uh, we could put antimatter tank here, actually. Yeah, I might do that. Although I think in our game we don't have that many tanks to play with at the moment. We'll see how far this can go. It should be way more than enough, I think. Pr probably. Probably. 
Alright. Uh, what's our target? How about... Hankorus? That's pretty... That's pr let, let's go Astral Snow. That's pretty similar to our deep space mining targets, I think. Well, let's make it Sands of Time, just to be sure. Why can't we launch? Haven't done an integrity check yet. Uh, okay, cool. I think the speed is circuit controlled. Yeah, target speed, 68, 75. We need more Holmium accumulators. Oh, you're kidding. It already hit something? We didn't even get to fit... We've got eight turrets here. What's going on? Oh, we have no... We have no beam... Yeah, 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 that would probably help. Now this orbit... It would probably help if we had any energy whatsoever. Uh, let's speed things up a little bit. Okay, park that back here again. And we need a beam. Uh, and we could probably speed up the process of... Charging up. Why is this ship going up and down in power? Uh, I think it was... Not entirely sure. Actually, probably the laser turrets using up the power that we had. Not entirely sure. All right, so that is already far more than warm enough to run the turbines. It would probably help if we gave ourselves some water as well. Uh, water, exactly ninety-five percent full. Oh wow, that is warming up fast. And this is at normal speed. 1500 degrees already. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, we do have cheat naquium, naquitite filling up our chests. But that doesn't really matter. Alright, let's remove those. And I guess I'll remove those as well. The point was to see how far this would go in a couple of tanks after all. And what was our target called? Uh, Sands of Time. Watch. What's our power look like? 23.3 megawatts. Uh, we ac we're actually dipping into the accumulator pretty easily. What's our target speed? 100, because we've only got the one accumulator. Maximum speed is now 2... Wait, what? Oh, this one was empty, that's why. Uh, but yeah, we because we've only got four condenser turbines, I think it was six condenser turbines that I used on the new player ship. No, it's only four. So we've got four condenser turbines, uh, four engines, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine laser turrets. 
and a couple of shields. Are these things running properly? It should be like 20 megawatts. Huh. On... Oh, is it because the stress is higher? Container stress is like 857, as opposed to... Uh, I think I have that player ship here somewhere. Or not? Oh, here it is. Yeah, what's your container stress? It's only 196. Okay. So our top speed is going to be... Oh, sorry, 526 hull stress. Uh, so compare that to... 857 container stress, it's like almost double, but if anything, shouldn't that mean, shouldn't that just mean we're going slower and the, the lasers have less to do? It is wider though. How much wider is it? It's like three tiles wider. Hmm. I'm having trouble accounting for... Okay, the accumulator charge does seem to be net... No, it seems to be hovering. Our target speed is... It is still faster than we're going. So I think we are... Are we actually dipping... Where's our engines? They're dipping when the lasers fire. We're not bottlenecking on power because the... Uh, because the accumulators say so, we're dipping on power because they get, the lasers get super prioritized over the engines. Uh, bottlenecking on power, that is. Hmm. Uh, let me just double check. Energy, weapon... Yeah, this is the level of research that we have in our game. I'm pretty sure we don't need this many lasers. But I don't know how much... It, it should only help a tiny amount to lower the number of them. Because they only use 24 kilowatts minimum. On the other hand... Lots of new ship designs, indeed. Uh, I've got, so these ones here, you can see how they've all got the same, uh, the back is about the same, the resupply shape. Uh, I was signing a set of these that would be used for a future playthrough. Uh, and the idea is we build a pick up and drop off station for these that we can upgrade into these with no trouble in future. So we don't have to reshape everything going from one design to the next. So this one right here is uh, only 400 container stress. Uh, it is, you know, pretty much as soon as you get spaceships you can do this with one research in integrity uh, and also ion engines of course. Uh, then we've got a slightly bigger version of it that can go faster and how many chests do you have? Uh, 16 chests although we do need a little bit of four of them to go to uh, nuclear stuff as opposed to 10 chests. And then we've got once you get the energy beam receivers, it makes sense to make this. Uh, 
And the next jump after that is going to be antimatter. Don't you start with 300 stress cap? Yeah, but... Spaceship. Uh, where's the first one? Let's see. Spaceship. So it takes Astro 3 and nothing else, really, uh, to get spaceships. But you probably have Material Science Pack 1 when you've got Astro 3. Uh, and then 2 is another 100. 3 is another 100, but that's... If you're doing them more or less in sequence... You almost certainly have um, Material 1 and probably 2 before you have Astro 3, right? Alright, so what's our speed here? 105. And I should have checked uh, what is the speed of the alt design. Let's do that. If I can figure out a good spot to put these fluid cheats. And then we need some ion stream. Even those little cheap infinity pipes are probably going to affect... Uh, the whole integrity, yeah. So I'll wait till... I'll wait till we've got some ion in there. A hundred and five isn't too bad. Uh, container stress is above hull stress, so I can't really add any to it without slowing down. I could easily add... Oh yeah, how far have we gone? Uh, we've only gone this far from Calidus, and we've actually used like... 4% of our fuel. So I might want to make sure we put double antimatter fuel here, after all. Also, now that I think about it, uh, it's probably better if the refuel for antimatter doesn't line up where the liquid rocket fuel did. So that we can have both at the, uh, at the resupply slash drop off for these things. Okay, so that's just slightly behind, that, that's behind the... Spaceship clamp wire pass through. Okay, good. That doesn't line up. Yeah. So, so that we can have a, um, a drop off slash resupply station that refuels both types. Actually, the liquid rocket fuel comes in from the back here. So. Oh no, here we go. Oh. Oh, that's where we're doing the liquid rocket fuel resupply. Okay, so it is actually the same. So all the more reason uh, to put a tank in here so that that can go there. But I do want to see how far this goes if we just have a couple of tanks. Alright, that is more than... Wait, what? Space pipe. Did I make a mistake? Oh, I see what I did here. That's fine. And this would normally be space pipe. Okay. So we've got... Oh, we need heat again. I just want to see the top speed of the old design. A 
105 is not bad, but I'm, I'd be lying if I didn't, if I said I'm not a little disappointed. Um, I don't really know how far we could have this sticking out without encroaching on some of our existing builds. I would love to put this here. We can try. But we're already kind of... Not exactly bottlenecking on power. We just slow down slightly whenever the lasers... Well, not whenever the lasers fire. When enough of them fire. 23.3 megawatts. We've got just over 2 megawatts here. Everything else is pretty much negligible. So... Uh, let's see. Just call it 21.3 megawatts. I'm sure the rounding won't be a problem. 3.86... Uh, 21.3 divided by 3.86, 5.52. We've got just enough lasers that it's possible to dip into the engines. What if we didn't? I hate the asymmetry of it, but what can you do? Our top speed is creeping slightly forward. It's going to be a lot more consistent, assuming the lasers can keep up. Obviously. I'm not wearing lasers myself, am I? No, good. It actually looks like we're not even getting close to hitting asteroids. Like maybe even we could get away with four lasers, although I think that'd be a bit risky. We'd probably eventually hit something. Uh, I should have brought some spaceship walls with- oh I do. Okay, cool. Uh, I was going to say, I don't want to cheat, I don't want to use slash cheat while we're out here, because then I have to go to the trouble of unresearching the lasers back to the point where we're at in the game. Cobalt, Cobalt Ethan, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Can you also use bullets instead? Yes, you can. I just don't want to have to deal with the logistics for that, uh, especially the fact that it's going to need a logistic chest for the bullets. Um, and that's going to eat into our container stress. If you can get away with using yellow bullets? No, I don't think so. Actually, I'm curious now that I think about it. Let's pause. No, oh, let's pause. How many hit points do these have? 60,000? 6,000 on the small asteroids, 60,000 on the medium ones. They do have some resistances as well. Electric 50, physical 20. They don't have any uh, laser resistance, I don't think. It's... Fire isn't... Fire and laser aren't the same, right? Okay, so no? Yeah, no. That is a lot more hit points than I was like... Enter the vehicle using enter. Apparently a medium asteroid is a vehicle. Entered the vehicle? Oh no, I have to... I have to see what just happened to you. What the... What... What... Okay... <laughs> That was a bit strange. Uh, let's speed things up again. 
yeah, so it seems like... I don't know, it may be a little bit risky, but it seems like four lasers is actually sufficient. Oh, we need to go through deep... We need to go through asteroid fields. Through maximum density to ensure that this is safe. I suspect it isn't, actually. Okay, so we've got our fluids, we've got our heat. Uh, let's find out exactly how fast the old design goes. I'll just aim it at Black Mirror. Black Mirror Space, indeed. Zem, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Angler. Um, I think it only ever got to like 40 or 50, right? The old design. I don't know, it's still accelerating at a decent speed. So you would need 250 uranium magazines if you want to kill a big asteroid using bullets? Ouch. That doesn't sound right, though. I'm pretty sure I've seen... I'm pretty sure you can use bullets, so why... Why are the hit point numbers so high? Let's see. Damage 20 plus 88 laser. So why does it look like these things have so many hit points? Hmm. That's a head scratcher, that is. That came really close to hitting. And we're only in normal density. So yeah, we definitely need more laser. Um, I could put these two back a bit. So, well, there it is. I could put these two back a bit so they don't fire normally, like most of the time. And that way we won't get the dips in engine speed unless we come relatively close to getting hit. I am curious to see if this would be more energy efficient, but there isn't really room for it, question mark? What's our speed now? It's still 105. That's pretty decent. And I don't think adding more antimatter engines would be very effective here because we're going to need more lasers to support that and we're going to need more power to support that and so on. So we can't really pull that off with the same uh, with the same shape. I don't think. Where's our ship? It's still in Calidus, I think. What's our top speed? Fifty-four, and it's going significantly slower than that, actually. Okay, well, what we've done is already a huge improvement. So its actual speed is about 30. Um, bottlenecking on... Why is it bottlenecking on power? Oh, because it's using ion engines, of course. Yeah. 
All right, let's send you back to Nalvis Orbit. That's all I needed to know. It's going to go significantly slower in uh, asteroid fields and so on. Uh, how far are we? We are decently far out from Calidus. This would be getting somewhat close to our target. And we've used... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I think... Why don't we head all the way out there? Unfortunately, I can't peek at the star map while we do this. Unless... Uh, editor. There we go. You can actually see it moving. Just a little bit. 4.30 UPS. Uh, I don't think we're going to have trouble getting all the way to one of the most distant destinations and back on two tanks of antimatter fuel. So really the question is... What if we go through... Uh, what if we go through maximum density asteroid fields? Are we going to take damage? Hey, repetitive beats. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're still getting quite a few dips in the engine power. Oh well. I mean, we're still maintaining 105 speed. So I guess it's no big deal. Now the true test. Uh, I'm going to turn off my RoboPort so that... If we get damaged, we actually see it. Here we go. Maximum density asteroid field. I might slow it down again, actually, so that we can see how close it gets. Let's head for Rocky Ridge. We'll be in the asteroid field that much longer. It doesn't seem like it's having any significant greater difficulty in the denser, uh, denser asteroid field. But we need a bigger sample size. Yeah, it's just kind of the lasers are firing, are spending more of the time firing, but that doesn't necessarily even translate into... Oh, there it is. The accumulator charge is actually dropping. It is barely dropping. It got back to 100. So our target speed didn't even drop yet. Not really. If I don't want to use a combinator to multiply this out, um, it would actually take, considering our top speed is 105, uh, we'd need multiple combinators just to like get the remainder of division because we can't use decimals to set the top speed only a little bit higher than the accumulator charge. I could give it, like, a constant combinator, negative 95 uh, speed signal, and these two are connected. But I think it does weird things if we give it a negative. Maybe? This actually does seem to be safe, though. Uh, where can we go? Hal Halcyon. 
in order to stay in the asteroid field. Yeah, this does actually seem to be safe. Of course, if I just add some more... If I add some more storage, we go a bit slower. Maybe the sweet spot here uh, for greater efficiency is actually to go a little bit slower. So that the lasers, at least when we're going through regular asteroid fields, I mean, regular density... If we go just that little bit slower, maybe we don't get the dips in the engine uh, power. And maybe with the increased capacity, it's actually effectively higher. We are already going like more than three times the speed of those other ships. Hmm. Also, it will add some... If, if I add booster tanks, it will actually add some container stress. Yeah, I wonder if we could go, like, 5% slower. If I add some containers... And if going 5% slower consistently would stop us from turning the engines off like that. And we actually gain, what? We go from 16, uh, 20 to 22, that is not 5%, right? Thank you for the follow, Zem. Oh no, that's not 20 to 22, that is 28 to 30. Uh, what is that in terms of a percentage? Uh, 30 over 28? One point... it's 7% more. Our top speed has only dropped by 3? Or 4? So we're actually like twice as... We're actually better off here. For the throughput. Yeah, our top speed has dropped a few percent, and our container... Uh, we've gained seven percent uh, storage. And if we get it... if we keep slowing it down... if we get a similar ratio by adding more container stress, and we get it to the point where we just barely don't get these dips in engine power. Which shouldn't happen, by the way, because we've got accumulators as well. I'm not... I wonder, now that I think about it... The player ship that we made was using Naquium accumulators with five times the max output. These ones, max output is 5 megawatts. If we had an accumulator per laser... Max output of the laser is 3.86 megawatts. Max output of the accumulator is only uh, 5. So we've got 10 megawatts max output from these two accumulators. That should be way more than enough. We've got 5.82 times 4. 23.28 megawatts maximum, like always. And 3.86 times 6. 23.16. Uh, theoretically, we shouldn't even ever dip into the accumulator at this rate. 50 kilowatts we can pretty much ignore here. 
And that's the biggest thing other than... Like, one kilowatt, one kilowatt, one kilowatt. I think that's literally everything. Oh, and 500 watts from the filter inserter. Doesn't actually make sense. I'm curious now, if I add more accumulators, do we avoid those dips in the engine power? I don't think it should, but it looks like it might. Are the turbine outputs full? I don't think so. Um, the internal turbine steam, like, it's only if the water output is blocked uh, that this is an issue. I guess we could... Hmm. Where's that other ship? I sent it back to Nalvis Orbit, right? Yeah, okay, good. So it's not moving. Oh, it is consuming steam. Let's park it. Wait. It's consuming steam? Oh, it doesn't have a solar panel. Uh, okay. Could you please anchor somewhere... Somewhere that I can give you some power so that you stop consuming steam. There we go. So now if we look at our steam consumption. Are the accumulators sometimes prioritized? Uh, lasers are super prioritized. Um, but the accumulators themselves... They're... They're a lower priority to feed than, like, everything else. Alright, engine... Whoa. Whoa, what just happened? Oh, we got... We got to our destination, that's what happened. Alright, let's go to Crystal Collective. Also, yeah, we've got a ton of fuel. Uh, so that answers my question. Two antimatter tanks are going to be way more than enough. No matter where we're going. Uh, but I did also want to know, judging by this graph, adding more accumulators did get us to the point where the lasers aren't stealing from the engines anymore. Just to simplify things, I might keep the same number of chests. But I'm pretty sure with the circuitry that we're using, the only external circuitry checks for zero naquitite. Uh, I mean, it also checks that we've got some of this stuff as well, but that's sort of beside the point. It probably doesn't matter if I add more of these. Uh, speed is very... oh wait, integrity check. There we go. Speed is creeping back up to 105. So that's like, uh, what, three and a half? Yeah, 3.5 times the speed of the version with ion engines. Approximately. We have to approximate it because it's going slow because of power bottlenecks. And it's going to go even slower through the asteroid field. This also means, not that it matters very much, but it also means that we're going to get there with more heat and more water. Alright, so now we're up to our maximum speed uh, that we had before we added the containers. And we still haven't seen a single dip. 
We're, we're seeing the accumulator charge dip slightly, but we don't see the engines dip at all. This is what I would have expected from even a couple of accumulators, but I mean, technically looking at the math, it would seem that we've got enough power for everything, but it just doesn't work out that way. Uh, but yeah, this has answered pretty much all the questions that I had, I think. Uh, let's go back to Nalvis Orbit. And it's just going to be a matter of seeing how we squeeze things together and uh, how I like the look of it and so on. The only other thing I could do is endlessly tweak how many containers we take. Um... Because when we added a couple of containers, we lost a little bit of speed, but we gained more overall throughput. But I'm just not going to worry too much about that. It's going to bring us... It's going to bring us the, this... We're going to have like 3.5 times the throughput with this already. Uh, and if we have relatively small, fast ships, then uh, then we're going to have a sort of more consistent throughput. Unless and until we are saturating Naquitite everywhere when meeting all of the demands. But this will be this will be a good stopgap, so that we don't have to redesign our. Uh, drop-off stations or outposts or anything. Alright, let's head back to Nal uh, Nalvis as quick as we can. ETA... 30 minutes? Wait, how fast are we going? Surely I haven't been doing this for half an hour. Uh, I did speed it up earlier. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Unfortunately, as long as we're in editor mode... Actually, let me just jump out of editor mode. Uh, I'll just deal with super speed while we... I don't know if there's actually anything else to do here. I guess we could see exactly how many accumulators we need. Uh, so four of them is max output 20 megawatts. I would imagine that is more than enough to prevent the engines from dipping. I would have thought two would be more than enough though. So far so good. Let's drop it down to three. Then we start to see the engines dipping very quickly. Alright, four it is. Although, I'm pretty sure... Since container stress is higher than hull stress, we could add as much stuff as we like, as long as that hull stress stays lower than contain... Whoops! No, 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 no. Uh, as long as hull stress stays below container stress, it's not going to make any difference to how fast we go. Yeah, the shape of this build doesn't really lend itself to throwing in a couple of shield generators. And we've tested and confirmed we don't really need them here. So this is fine. I would definitely put them on a new build that we do from scratch.
Uh, the only thing I'm still worried about, actually, is looking at the old build. We had some... We had some underground pipes sticking out the back. Oh, cool. They're actually as far back as the... Yeah, the wall here is actually as far back as the... Antimatter engines. We're actually taking up slightly less space at the back. So that's going to be no trouble whatsoever to fit with our existing infrastructure. Ships need to go more faster. That's why we're building this. We've, uh, we've taken our existing deep space miners and just shoved some antimatter engines on it, tweaked it just a little bit. Uh, and we're going to go 3.5 times faster. How much of a battering can the walls take without the lasers? Uh, basically none. Pretty much, uh, almost as soon as they get hit, they're going to go down. Uh, I've seen walls survive a rock. Maybe two, I doubt it. Uh, we could find out. I don't know if uh, speed matters for how much damage it does. Oh wait, let's let's slow this down first. Editor. Uh, I'm just gonna start removing lasers, and let's see. Oh, I've got two left still. It's fine. I'll turn off my RoboPort. Oh, there's a RoboPort here. Yep, that was it. That already killed us. And that one as well. So, there you go. And by killed us, I mean stopped the ship from being able to move. Alright, what's our ETA? Uh... Very rapidly dropping. Um, so... If possible, I would like to have about the same shape for this part, but I think if we're going to have symmetry with the lasers, I might have to move this. In fact... I don't know, this design is actually... Probably what I'll settle for. Now that I look at it. We're just going to have a little bit less. We're going to have one eighth less water storage approximately. Which, considering we're going 3.5 times faster. Um, we're going to be consuming significantly less power over the whole trip. That's definitely not going to be a rob. Wait a minute. No, we've still got the eight tanks. No, I was only thinking about putting this down here. So we've still got the same uh, storage, actually. Editor. Anchor. Yeah, look at that footprint. It's almost exactly the same, it's just slightly narrower at the back there. It's not going to cause any issues at all. Okay, but... Liquid rocket fuel... does come out at the same horizontal spot. Uh, I could just add... Copious booster tanks. We're a little short on... We're not that short. I can make more booster tanks. We'll just go with this. Oh, does that... That should probably be okay. The only question is... 
whether any of the outposts are going to have trouble with the pipe being exactly there. Well, not the outposts, actually. We only need to resupply it at Nalvis. And I can make it work at Nalvis. It's fine. Yeah, this will do. Alright, so... Uh, this little chest can stay here, I suppose. And everything else can stay the same, I think. We don't need the media point defense to be on the ship. Although, now that I think about it... Um... Nah, it's fine. Actually, I'm curious. Hull stress, container stress... Wait, it went up? What did, what did I change? I didn't... Oh, I added this. I added the booster tanks, of course. Okay, so um, hull stress, container stress. This is only going to be hull stress, right? And inserter. Yeah. I guess we could still have some media point defenses as a treat. Can I... Can I squeeze this through here? I don't think I can. Wait, why can't that go up? Oh, the wire won't stretch. Uh, this goes up here. This goes back up here. Make absolutely sure that's the same height. It's one above the beam receiver. And that goes there. This should still reach over here. I guess we could still have the point defenses there. Have you changed the default picker dollies binds? Uh, just one of them. The one that rotates... What do you call it? Uh, the, the one that rotates, for example, long combinators like this. Uh, I forget what the default was, but I changed it to uh, full stop on the numpad. Walls work. Walls work. Indeed. Wait, that looks different. Oh, I see. It doesn't. It's not the same in front of the laser, but it's sort of the same next to the console. Kaleki, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, that'll do. Uh, let's blueprint this thing. And get back to our game. Only specific walls for Starship? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't use regular... I don't think it'll even let you place it. Oh. Okay. Hmm. That's in that's an interesting thought. So I don't think it'll be worth doing, but you could put much stronger walls in front of the spaceship walls. Uh I wouldn't recommend it. I, I would suggest just having enough defenses for the walls to not take damage in the first place. That was the default for me in Picket Dolly. I think it was full stop on like the main part of the keyboard, wasn't it? It was somewhere around there where I, I, I occasionally mess it up if I reach there. I, or no, it had another bind. I think it was because I think it was because in the editor under time, uh, tick once is full stop like this. And that's very useful for debugging certain circuits. I was just wondering since you managed to do it while moving the mouse. Oh, okay. 
So I'll just demonstrate this. If I point the mouse here, hold shift, start using the cursor keys, uh, whether I move the mouse or not, uh, the mouse isn't actually still pointing at this thing, right? So until I point the mouse at something else, or not even that, until I until I pick a dolly something else, uh, I, I, I could move the mouse wherever I like while I'm doing this. It just remembers the last thing that you pick a dolly so that you don't have to follow it with the mouse the whole time. You can just do it like this. Yeah, that's not a setting that I changed or anything. All right, let's grab our Deep Space Miner. Uh, create copy. Select new contents. Make sure we include the tiles. And I'll add antimatter engine. But if you need to keep holding shift while using arrow keys, don't you run out of arms? Well, I wasn't moving my player character at the same time. More arms would be good, though. Deep Space Miner AM. Fantastic. Uh, and I haven't changed any of the circuitry or anything, so that should all work out just fine. It's not actually connected yet. Yeah, no. It's just connected to the one storage tank. Wait, what happened to the UPS? I jumped into a different game. This is the... Uh, uh, this is our, like, sandbox. It's just for testing things. We've got infinite resources. We've got... Uh, things that delete infinite resources, and so on. Okay. I might save this, actually, speaking of which. And let's... I, I did get the blueprint, right? Yeah. That'll do. Alright. Uh, let's jump back into our regular game. That makes a lot more sense, yeah. Don't worry, we'll be back to uh, beautiful, glorious 20 UPS in just a moment. I mean, I got it back up to 23 from deleting a bunch of old stuff, and or from variants. Those are some really fast bots, yeah. Imagine getting hit by one. Ouch. You'd just get deleted. Yaman and Mazzle Fazzle. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I don't think I've got antimatter engines auto-delivered to any of our uh, spaceship berths just yet. Sometimes I wish life would move in 20 UPS. Uh, that would be a bit of an exaggeration, but that's a bit like what it feels like if you do the right kind of speed training. Like, uh, if you have the means, take some fast-paced game that you play and crank up the speed. Practice that for like 15 minutes and then change the speed back to normal. Just from one session, it'll look slower. Mid it. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It would go bonk, indeed. Uh, oh yeah, this was our birth for the Deep Space Miners, wasn't it? Where we've specifically got very carefully the robo networks don't connect from that. Uh, so, it looks like we won't have any trouble adding 
the antimatter connection here. Uh, what about on Nalvis? Uh, we need to add... I think it's here. Oh, that's... Mm, okay, that's fine. I can just change this pipe. So this one goes up here, goes through there, and then we can have an underground here for antimatter. And something similar at the other end. We still have here to drop off antimatter as well. So that should be okay. Sounds more like Factorio while fixing things in the background. Time for some Factorio in the background. While I continue to fix bugs at work. <laughs> okay. Sergeant Charles, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Finally managed to catch your stream. Just want to say a big thank you for raiding me the other day during the speedrun attempt. No worries. You're welcome. Uh, okay, so if I put new Deep Space Miner here. We're going to need a drop-off for antimatter in this block. Uh, that might be a problem. Kind of. I could do a station here. Hmm. That's actually kind of tricky. What if I put... Okay, this place doesn't have that much traffic, so we could break the rules a little bit here and put our antimatter drop off here. I mean, this block is already kind of a mess, so what's one more bit of horrendous? We've got antimatter here already, actually. Why don't we just pump it down? Can't you store antimatter in barrels and ship them by bots? Uh, sort of. They're like barrels. I think they're called canisters. Antimatter canister. We do need to use... Well, that's just energy. And a bit of logistics. 100 supercooled thermofluid becomes 125 degree thermofluid. And then we have to... Uh, have a machine. Uh, the thing is, we need a whole uh, biochemical facility just to empty it. No, wait, that was... Hold on. Empty canister. Here we go. Yeah, we need a plas... We need a particle accelerator just to empty it. And we have to deal with thermofluid in and out. That's kind of a nuisance. It's very, very, very dense storage, but I think I'd rather just deal with the trains. Uh, okay, so... How connect this? Let's just add some more scaffolding here. Oh, and let's continue building this. I'm pretty sure we've still got a beam aimed here. Thermofluid is not strictly free technically. Yeah, but it costs so little. Like, you, you lose so little of it over time that... Uh, when you first make thermofluid, you need to make lots of it. And it does cost you quite a bit. But, like, overall, the throughput that you need to support it, it's... Like, practically free, really. It's literally just a little bit of... A uh, little bit of fluid, like, like crude oil, is the base of it. And some cryonite. And cryonite, I don't know about other runs, but... Cryonite has been by far the easiest to keep up with in this game. We're just getting it from Hagen, nowhere else. And we're not even really trying on Hagen. Did 
that looks like a micro circuit. My bases always look like a ball of yarn. <laughs> Indeed, Factorio in space. It is beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at those bots go. Okay, so... What were we doing? Oh, yeah. Just confirming that we do have a beam receiver here. I mean, a beam aimed at the receiver. Uh, we need some... That does connect, just barely. Fantastic. Now we just need... Uh, this would be better. Some antimatter piping. Does this work? Yes, it does. Perfect. Looking pretty good, actually. Underground pipe this way. Underground pipe that way. Oh. I completely forgot about this extra storage tank I have here. It can stay. It's fine. And... What do we need? Seven? Here it comes. Oh, we kind of need a pump here as well. Or I could just pump it way up here. Nah, that's fine. I guess it would be more UPS friendly. Like, it's such a small thing, but every little thing sort of counts. Uh, I guess it would be more UPS friendly to pump it here, and then all of this is, like, static after a point. What CPU do you have? Uh, here's the specs. i7-10700F. We don't have long pipe here. I need to go deliver it myself. I mean, there are other ways I could do it, but that's the quickest and easiest. And we need to get antimatter delivered downstairs. Uh, is it worth bothering? Let's see. The new ship will take a hundred thousand antimatter, actually, although it really doesn't need that much storage. I got the same GPU. Yeah, it's pretty good for, uh, like mid range, decent GPU, right? Cost effective. No wonder you're bound on RAM. Ouchie. How fast should RAM be for an OP Factorio build? Unfortunately, I can't go faster um, without swapping out the motherboard. The motherboard itself is bottlenecks the RAM on, I think it's 2933. Uh, do we have antimatter here? Wait, what? We should have anti map. Huh? Hold on, what? Okay, that was really weird. I think that was because I messed around with Piccadilly's. Probably as fast as possible, yeah. 29... 33 is still decent? Yeah, I mean, if not for Factorio bottlenecking so hard on RAM, I would say so as well. Really good buy two or three years ago. 
Doesn't matter too much for intel. Uh, how's that? Okay, uh, we need to build a logistic chain to bring antimatter down to Nalvis. We're not going to need that much throughput of antimatter because it's incredibly efficient fuel. Um, and for this reason, and also the fact that we need Naquium cubes to make antimatter storage, um, like antimatter specific storage tanks, I'm not going to worry about uh, going to the tr like we did with the rocket, uh, rocket fuel tanks here, going to the trouble of putting down spaceship floor just so that we can put in the booster tanks just so that we can store way more liquid rocket fuel here. Uh, the storage tank is half as dense as the antimatter tank as well. So for these three reasons, I'm not going to worry about getting an, uh, booster tanks down there. I think we will need to get the constructions, but oh. Oh, I completely forgot about this. I was doing this uh, before the stream started. Oh, uh, this is... they're so far away. Also, at least one of them, two of them are still overly full from the shenanigans of split stacks. Luckily, we can sort of fix it remotely. If I just pick stuff up and press Q, it gets put back in their inventory automatically. And that fixes the split stacks. And then the bots can find an inventory slot to put in the stuff that's getting auto-trashed. Okay. There's still one of them that's over full somewhere. I wish I could at least tell which one it is without clicking on every single one of them. Oh my lord. Oh, that, there it is. Wait, this one's still... this one's not auto-trashing its iron and stuff. Oh no. Oh no. It, it actually is full? No, it's got a slot there. Okay. Uh, we do need more crude oil, but to be honest, I can't really be bothered with this right now. I'm going to send them up to get this build updated first. And we need to change the shape of these ion pipes. Okay, first of all, I'm going to delete these three. There's no robo network here. That is a little bit unfortunate. Um, how about... If I pump this way... Oh, never mind. It's disabled by control behavior. Hmm. I'm just going to not stress that much about losing a tiny amount of ion, if that's what happens. Actually, I think I can pick a dollies this through here. Oh no. Uh awkward. Um I guess we just delete a little bit of ion stream. That can go there. This goes here, and sorry, 53 iron stream. I tried my best. 
My CPU is three years old. I assumed your computer is as old. No. DDR4 is so fast it can't be a bottleneck. I think it can. Um, I mean, we went from the exact same computer, but with a slower RAM and not dual uh, channel. Uh, we gained like 20 UPS when it was at 30. We have an i7 8700K, not sure that's classed as old now. I mean, if it gets the job done still, who cares? If the motherboard doesn't support higher speeds, you can't use faster RAM. Yeah. Are uh, bots UPS friendly? I believe they are. Although I don't know it as a matter of fact. Alright, so this is going to be our antimatter. And on this end... Uh, on this end we can suck this ion out. Do a better job of... Tidying this up. I guess we'll remove that. What if we did it like so? And then what's this? Three? No, it's two. Oh, that's good. That works. That's perfect, actually. Nice and neat. Okay. Fastest looks to be 3600. It's crazy if a game like Factorio needs it. Well, bear in mind that we've built everything very big. Um, we've got a lot of stuff in motion. It's kind of... I mean, when you really think about just how many things this game is doing simultaneously, it's kind of crazy, actually, how well it runs. Okay, so antimatter. How are we going to get that over here? Shouldn't be difficult. I'm really glad I put down the hazard concrete to show exactly where the ship goes. So here is our older design. And here's the updated one with antimatter engines. Slightly smaller where the engines go. So if we just go around this thing, it won't be a problem. Uh, I guess we can go down here. Work backward from our conclusion. Do this in Factorio, not where logic is concerned. And like so. Oh, I guess I could have done it on this side as well. Might have been easier. I mean, I can do I can do both, but the rate of pumping in antimatter it's not going to be it, it, we're not going to need that much overall throughput. Can this go through here? Yes, good. Fantastic. And then, I don't know, should I bother to pump in the antimatter here? I don't see why not. Where am I going to fit a pump, though? I guess I could move this slightly. Let's 
pretty easy, actually. And then a 15. Get this out of there. 7, 8, 9... And I'll build this one out before I decide how I'm going to do the rest of that. Fantastic. Uh, Whiskers, I threw something together for you as well on that topic. Probably improve it somehow, but it's a start. You like? Look at that, indeed. Uh, that is a little awkward. How about this? Much better. I like. Great job. Thank you. Oh no, fantastic one-off, indeed. I moved to the one on the one-off. Um, there was at least one person who looked at it with a little bit of confusion. I think this is maybe a little bit more readable, right? Because the one was one-off? How dare you. I'm shaking and crying. All right, that is... let's pump this this way as well. Gonna be that. Uh, and then we need to request antimatter here. Provide threshold one, maybe not. Uh, LTN, pick up, plus drop off. Provide stack threshold 160. Request threshold 100k. Anti matter stream. And then we just have to get it down to Nalvis. That looks kind of weird about this a little bit less bad and there's our spiders and I guess we're using this trash station to take everything away because antimatters are fluid I don't have to remember to whitelist it here so it doesn't get taken away in the trash but it is good to think about these things That might end up in a big explosion. Cool. We need big brain emote too. Uh, how's this Veldak? <laughs> I mean... It's a start. It's a pl Think of it as a placeholder, <laughs> at least. It kind of looks like a weird hairdo. <laughs> That's another emote? How dare you? I guess I could do that. Wait, let me add it to the to-do list, whether I decide to or not. How dare you. I don't even know how people can decide where they put everything. Is it won't become a mess 10 to 20 hours down the road? I mean, yeah, you need, like... Especially early on in the playthrough, um, when we were boxed in by biters, uh, it got very spaghetti. Um, the inserters don't build the same way as in vanilla, at least the first few. You need more intermediate products, you don't know where they go. Like, you can't really plan everything out perfectly on your first 
when, when you you haven't been exposed to this stuff yet, right? Like even as a very experienced Factorio player, when you expose yourself to like space exploration, for example, or some other big mod, uh, say Crestorio 2, there's no way you're planning everything out so it's going to be perfectly neat and tidy the first time. Unless you spend, I don't know, 600 hours just designing before you actually build anything. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything in the chat from earlier. Hey, Evil Plum, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Meloxel, I don't know if I said a hello earlier. Good to see you again also. Uh, what do we got? It's funny that you can pump antimatter somewhere. That might cause an explosion. Yeah. Just a regular old fluid pump. No worries. That's the beauty of the game. There's always something you can do better. Absolutely. Looks like one of those wigs Judge has got. <laughs> yeah, I was... Uh, I didn't have time for it, but I was thinking of going over pixel by pixel and making the the folds on the brain a bit more visible. You know how it is nothing more permanent than a temporary solution? Indeed. Midden knows how it is. I suppose you got to dismantle a lot of, a lot of stuff once you got more tech and more room. Yeah, I've got a lot of... I've got a, I've still got a ton of dismantling on my to do in this playthrough. The rail block helps a lot. It helps a ton, especially with like let's pick one at random. I'm going to like move my mouse somewhat randomly and land on uh well this is actually two recipes, polarization data and electromagnetic data. So polarization data has two junk outputs and a fluid output that needs to be recycled. Um, and this one has junk data and 25 degree thermofluid as well. So we've got scrap, junk data cards, and 25 degree thermofluid that needs to be recycled. The rail block is just the perfect way to deal with these things. Um... I mean, if you don't know how to deal with LTN and all of these circuits and everything, you could just make, like, more stations to deal with the three different outputs. Um, but yeah, like, what I'm dismantling up here, actually, uh, partly because I just wanted to have, like, a decent base, to, a beginning to work from. Uh, we designed and built a main bus base that does just the first tier uh, of each science pack. And I stupidly decided, okay, uh, we're going to go for one space manufactory with no speed modules or anything. And we're going to build with just tier three speed modules, no beacons, because we didn't have them. We're going to build to support the throughput of one of these machines for each type of science pack. Um, it turned out to be a very large main bus base. Um, and more to the point, every bit of junk and scrap and everything had to find its way all the way back to some kind of central recycling area. You could do it with bot spam with relative ease, although the fluids could be a bit more of a nuisance. Trains are... fluid trains are absolutely fantastic. Like, better than probably anything else for moving fluids over a very long distance. Unless you want a line of many, many, many pumps. I play without LTN. My space stations look funny. How so? 
I made my base a bus at first, then for my proper base, I went with train grids. Yes, indeed, that's what we did here. I really do mean that the base looks like an integrated circuit design. If you zoom out, it just looks like I see. It's really pretty. Yeah, you get that a lot with uh, Factorio. Um, very minor spoilers for space exploration, but my pro tip when you haven't been in space very long, uh, if you like rail blocks, Bear in mind that Energy Science Pack 1 only costs, I mean, ra Space Rail only costs 50 Energy Science Pack 1. Uh, you do need one Energy Catalog for every 100 Space Rail, but you'll need the Energy Catalog for the Energy Science Pack 1 anyway. So if you want to, you know, power level straight towards that, you could probably get there pretty quickly. If you don't want to use LTN, I highly recommend Clonan's Train Control Signals mod. What does that do? Don't call me late for dinner. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, did we finish building this? I think so. I guess the spiders got their trash sorted out as well. Oh, nope, there's a little bit left. At least. Why don't we send them back to the mall for now? And um, I might have them loop back around to building that uh, that oil stuff. We've actually got two huge uh, oil patches that we haven't tapped into. Uh, that we don't even have to expand the map for. And considering we didn't have enough petroleum earlier to support... Uh, the chemical gel. Uh, it might be a good idea. Personally, I don't like city blocks on the map. They look too monotonous. Well, to each your own. What's this train doing? There's no inserters here. Uh, okay. Comparative genetic data. Hold on. What do you go into? Extended by your catalog. So how did we ever get extended by your catalog? Did we build this twice? That's weird. Is this a uh, secondary product from this build? It doesn't look like it. No, it's a whole other build right here. Comparative genetic data. Veldek wants to play... Did you disable the two minute wait time for LTN? Two minute wait time? Uh, data though. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do you mean, uh, like train timeout? I did change several of the default options. Stop timeout. Duration in seconds before trains are forced out of a station. Yes. Priorities, indeed. Did you have a break yet? I had one break. That was a couple of hours ago, though. Let me just close this. There we go. Okay, I was debating about turning that off myself. Yeah, I I have my own opinions, but for one thing, regardless, I really, really strongly recommend, uh, especially if you're new to LTN, look at all of the settings, the mod settings, because the default settings, uh, given certain assumptions that I think are very reasonable to make, basically add up to being a trap or two. 
you'll get trains coming back from places with items. You'll get, uh, like, several trains queued up to deliver to a spot that's supposed to have a train limit of one. Um, you'll get things overfilled. Because, for example, by default, the request and provide threshold is a thousand, but a train will stay at a station until it gets two seconds of inactivity, so it'll get completely full. And depending on what you've set at the destination station, it'll go over the limit. Words, words, words. Okay. Let me just make sure that seems fine. Let's get our spiders to come back down to this oil. Fire up the old screensaver. Put the words on the stream. And set autopilot. Words on stream in 30 seconds, and I'm going to take a break for a few minutes or so. Back soon.
And we're back. How'd you all do? Oh, I see a level one. Rip. But skip three levels. Nice. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Uh, we've got... Oh yeah, I noticed right before I left, uh... If you use partial deliveries in LTN, you need to read the train contents to determine when to stop inserting. Yes. Um, but if you are... If you're just learning LTN, if you're not that experienced with circuits, if you... And, and so on, like any of these things or all of these things, you're probably not reading from the LTN stop output and telling the inserters exactly what to put in or take out of the train. Uh, I think the default settings for something like LTN should probably just be the most easy possible combination of settings to use, right? Uh, that is not what I would say is the default LTN settings. Mazzle Fazzle, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We ripped epically. Check Discord. Check Discord. Game over. Level 8 ranking. Many numbers. Many stars. 69 verse 96. Okay, I see how it is. Indeed. Also, that is a glorious asymmetrical ship by Maholic. Wow. Okay, where were we? Uh, we need to make some antimatter ships. We've got one, actually. I could definitely send this one out. This can be oblong number five, I guess. The Warlord. Oblong five. And... Okay, if I send this thing out now... I was going to say I better make damn sure it's got antimatter available when it gets back. But in all likelihood, it's probably got enough antimatter for like four or five trips. Uh, but let's get it going, shall we? Oblong. Oblong lobulata. Go. Wait, how much heat does it have? 1200. That's probably enough, but I did jump the gun on that one. Is it moving? Yeah, it's moving. Let's just make sure everything is hunky-dory here. Space, indeed. Should be just fine. One, two, three, four, five, six lasers. Uh, so it's got 700 degrees of energy storage here. Hmm. Uh, let me just double check. I I'm sure that's fine for a return trip, but I would feel a little bit more comfortable if... Hmm. If this thing was... If we had one of these aimed... Wait, do we have some spares? We do. Okay, cool. Uh, why don't we just jam this one in here, probably because we can't fit one of these. Uh, that's a little bit of a problem. How about over here, perhaps? Assuming we have... Don't tell me I didn't leave any um, any power to extend out this way. Uh, rip. I, I left a few energy beaming things here in case we needed to ex uh, to fiddle with it or expand it, but I didn't leave that one crucial component. Can I stretch this further out this way? 
Oh yeah. Piccadillys to the rescue. And can we fit... We cannot. What about if I put this here? Also, how much power spare do we actually have? Like, literally one megawatt? Okay. Well, that is cutting it close, but... Oh. Oh, this one is already aimed there. Okay, never mind. Perfect. I... yeah, this is fine. When the ship gets here, it'll be given more heat. So that 700 degrees only needs to get it to Oblong. How, how far has it gone already, I wonder? It's already past Alessandro, bearing in mind our UPS is 22. Speed is just getting up to 103. Are the media cannons on the spaceship used during travel? No. Um, to be honest, I only included them on this one because they were free. At, because we were at the point where we have so much more container stress than hull stress. Uh, and the old design did this as well, and it fits really well. Did you unpower something when you moved that pole? Uh, no, I don't think so. I was pretty careful to check that. It wasn't at Rikeless, was it? It was Hankerous. Yeah, this one's just... Wait, what? Huh. It looks like it should be powered, but it's not. Well, that one's not even needed at this point. But still, I would prefer... If we didn't do that. Where are you taking that? Oh, there's one storage chest over here. Oh, wait, these are radar construction pylons, so we could have used one of those as well. So you pay for power based on the weight of the hull. Is the hull weight uh, based on circumference or surface area? So... Mostly surface area, I think. Um, but also stuff that we put in the ship. Uh, container stress is just storage tanks, chests, and so on. Uh, if container stress is higher than hull stress, then hull stress basically doesn't matter, and vice versa. Uh, but it has... the uh, Informatron has a few things to say about it. Tune, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. And how is your stream? Uh, let me just bring this up. So yeah, the Informatron uh, tells us a few things about spaceships. Uh, integrity stress. Additional technology lets you go larger. Calculated in two parts, hull stress mainly based on the size and shape of the ship, container stress based on the item and fluid storage capacity, uh, total integrity is stresses whichever stress factor is larger, they're not added together or weighted or anything like that, uh, and we've done a little test to confirm this as well. Um, it also tells us, where is it, exceptionally long thin ships, or ships with very thin sections in the middle are less sturdy than more rotund designs. Wide ships are sturdy but must clear more asteroids. Uh, so yeah, it, the shape does matter to some extent. Some structures have special effects on the ship integrity or speed such as the Nexus. I haven't seen anything like that yet. Uh, up to 10% of a ship's size doesn't count for empty spaceship tiles. The clear space is discounted in the stress calculation and useful for corridors. Second value of hull stress with 
Uh, no discount is useful. Wait, what? Let me read chat. Hey, good. Just getting space trains tonight. Nice. Then you can really get things going. 497, 497, 497 is the answer you Google until days until Dune 2 part, part 2 release. Does it actually say it three times? Oh, wait, the quote goes around the last one. There you go. So Google's not as excited. Uh, yeah, the second value is the whole stress with no discount. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's when you point at this and you see around the square bracket, uh, inside the square brackets, that's if we filled the entire ship up. Like, uh, not counting the stress of adding something in and of itself. Um, if there were no empty tiles, what would the whole stress be? Just once, I'm just excited. Fair enough. It's only a year and a half. We're almost there. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong ship. This is our ion ship. Well, I was just looking for a ship for a example here. But where is number five? It's almost getting close to leaving the solar system. Fantastic. Speed is still less than 104. I thought it was going to be at least 104, but that's okay. Oh yeah, we added these containers before we... We didn't test it again after adding these two containers. Looking forward to it? It might get delayed 20 times. I hope not. Uh, yeah, so this thing is still at 1200. It's going down so slow. Yeah, this thing is going to use a lot less power per distance than the Ion version. So I don't think we need to worry. Uh, what we do need is to get antimatter delivered to Nalvis. So that our antimatter ships, uh, antimatter versions of these ships will not eventually run out of fuel. Pretty sure all those pipes are connected properly. I think we have some empty slots available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got three available for antimatter here. Should I do an antimatter version of this? It's going to really simplify things. If we only need one fluid for this one. Uh, why don't we just start over here? I should probably pick up some antimatter engines. Actually, oh, this does have antimatter engines somewhere. This block here, perhaps? Yeah, it's got 10 antimatter. Oh, I requested those a million years ago, ahead of time. Cool, so we've actually got more anti antimatter engines than I realized. Like, double, actually. Okay. Uh, why don't we pick those up? Uh, I guess I'll... Yeah, there we... Oh, I'm already requesting them. Wait. Oh, I didn't turn on my robo-network thing. This is Brad. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good day. Got to get some sleep. Nice. Oh, you're, you're, you're dipping out. No worries. Thanks for the, thanks for the raid, Dune. Have a good sleep. I've read that in the past tense at first. How about a solar freaking spaceship version? Uh, solar, unfortunately, once we get to deep space, uh, solar is fine as long as you're in the solar system. Uh, once you get to deep space, this one doesn't have any actually. Uh, here is a good example. You only get 1% from a solar panel in deep space. So, I guess... I'm actually getting ideas now. 
it would be very slow overall. I think we'd have to set it to go so slow that it doesn't have to shoot down asteroids, if that's possible. Do we want to try and do this, like, right now? Just dip back into the, uh, the sandbox? If we fill a ship with solar panels, give it one antimatter engine. Uh, antimatter still uses ten times more power than a rocket engine, but... Uh, rocket engine's not going to get anywhere interstellar. This mod looks like real time sync? Absolutely. Oh no, ideas incoming? Indeed. I'm scared. Could you show information again for a sec? Oh, the Informatron? For spaceships? A solar only spaceship. That would be an interesting challenge. Seven hundred and twelve hours. Wait, does it say that some? Oh yeah, there it is. Didn't even realize that. I was always typing "I'm" for that. So six hundred hours ahead, indeed. Although, obviously, I've been not exactly rushing. Uh, apart from building whole empires of things that we're going to replace. And stopping to show how things work. And talking to chat and so on. Keep it going. The 20 UPS also doesn't exactly help to speed things up, indeed. Uh, Jaws Bizia? Buzz, Bowser? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Just noticed the 20 UPS, so the 700 hours might be just a bit more. I think the... I, I, I think this time that it shows here is, like, game time. Uh, so we're approaching, well, depending on how you count it, we're approaching a month of, like, game time, where it's moving at one-third speed at the moment. I definitely would have built smaller if I'd known just how gargantuan this playthrough was going to get, and where the UPS would end up. Um... Yeah, that's what I was curious about before. Comparative genetic data. Are we making that somewhere else? We need it for Bio 4. We got Bio 4, and yet there were no inserters here. So... Maybe? Is this it? It is. We built comparative genetic data twice. Maybe I was building it over there so that we could go faster? Maybe I just forgot. This is the, uh, this is the kind of thing, this, this is the kind of problem that we have with this playthrough. Like, uh, like paperwork getting lost in the administratum. Unless SE somehow changes how the game clock works, I don't think so. I don't see why it would either. All right, let's put in... We're not going to be pumping in liquid rocket fuel. Oh, this is... Yeah, that's right. Half of these are supplying and half of them are taking things downstairs. Okay. Uh, let's grab ourselves a tanker shuttle. And we'll edit it somewhat. And I would like for it to fit... Oh, I did not bring nearly enough spaceship floor. How many do we need? Uh, another 388? Good grief. Do I have the other spaceship parts? I think so. Okay. Uh, why don't we go with 500 for now? 
run back to the mall for a second. Uh, but yeah, I wonder if... That's going to stick out too much if we put these in the same place, so we'll probably tuck those in here. We're just going to be transporting antimatter anyway. We're not going to have to change this part. We do that as well. What's your time zone? GMT plus 10. East Coast Australia. Alright, so this one is going to be if antimatter stream uh, greater than... Well, let me just get rid of that for now. We don't want the ship auto-launching. But since the thing... Uh, since the thing that we're delivering is our fuel, we need to make sure... I guess all we have to do is on the Nalva side of things, uh, make sure that the ship takes off while it's still got some antimatter fuel. But I don't know how much... Uh, I don't know how much it's going to take... Oh, right. I forgot about this again. Okay. Let's actually build this a little bit, at least. Where are the beacons going to fit? That one is really good, actually. There's a pipe in the way. Uh, this one actually still touches everything, right? If I go two tiles to the right, that one gets missed. Yeah, that's good. I don't know how to use that in... Informatio yet? Yeah, information? T-Hacks, I'm at level 10 star mapping and I already have selfies with three of them. Uh, level 10 star mapping. So the selfies actually... Long range star mapping. I have no idea, to be honest. Doesn't sound like East Coast? What does that mean? I was trying to pick the accent, I'm guessing Vic. I've been asked where I'm from uh where I'm from by someone like in person where I was working. Depends how you say dance, trance, pants, etc. Dance, trance, pants. Oh yeah, I don't want to get distracted from... Uh, I'm going to end up sending the spiders back again at this rate. Alright, this one's touching those. This one... Uh, doesn't have anywhere to fit. Unless... That's actually pretty good. I might move this one over a bit so these two don't have beacon sickness. And I can't get any more coverage here. How many are we missing? One, two, three, four, five, six. I could... Hmm. Is it really worth beaconing these ones? Probably not. Let's throw in some modules. I don't think I've got... I, I might just add tier 3 modules to the pump jacks. Could be worse, could be from Perth. Ouch. Okay, uh, I need to get power down here, I need to get rail down here. Uh, I think this this is going to be an off-stream thing. You guys don't need to see me making another oil outpost, right? So 
So let's bring these guys back over here. I just need them to place a couple of combinators though. Maybe... Wait, the spaceship builder spider, does that carry combinators? Spaceship Buildotron, where are you parked? Please tell me you're carrying co You do. Of course you do. I don't see any... Oh, nope, there's the constant combinators. Alright, uh... Hmm. If I send it... Uh, if I build this... The moment I need my construction spiders for something else, they're going to have to walk 60 kilometers again. I think I'll just bring them back for now. Now then. Uh, I think I should manually get our... Get our new ship down there. And then look at how much... It's probably going to be the same as this one, actually. Well, launch energy is going to be like 800 gigajoules, but I don't know how much antimatter that represents. I don't know what to set this to, to tell the ship to take off. Uh... How about we look at how many gigajoules this is? So this is four tanks, 200k, 4,000 gigajoules. Okay, so it's 1,000 gigajoules per tank, 500 gigajoules per 25k. Um, 0 0.02. Let's just say 500 giga divided by 25,020. Wait, what am I doing? I'm trying to figure out exactly how much antimatter it's going to take for this ship to take off. Uh, if we have a thousand... No, 500 gigajoules per 25,000 stored is 0.02 gigajoules per single unit of antimatter, right? 0.02 per unit. And we need 800. So 800 over 0.02 is 40,000. That sounds like more than I would expect. But whatever, we'll, we'll set it to 50,000. Which is to say, uh, when antimatter stream for the whole thing is below 50,000, we should assume we need to take off and I would rather overestimate that than underestimate it. Except we're only going to be reading from like one tank. Otherwise we have to put circuit wire on everything. Build and set you free. Indeed. Gotta ask when you are... When you're going to start giving your space trucker tickets for accelerating too fast? Never. No such thing. Although the asteroids might try. Uh, don't know if I said already. Blue Lightning DT. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, I got my spaceship floor. Let's go. I'm not even going to bother with antimatter storage tanks, I think. Well, hmm. I guess if I fill this with antimatter storage tanks, then does it, is it going to cost less antimatter overall to move it around? 
Or is the uh, container stress just going to be higher? I guess we could find out. Do I have tanks? I do. Anyways, good to see you back at the fa- Always good to see you back at the factory. Thank you. Alright. We're almost there, I think. Speedy Spider doing its thing. I do wish there was higher tier exoskeleton research in this mod. Um, a little, little disappointed by that. Especially since, like, as far as I know, this is the fastest spider that we can make. So pretty much as soon as we have spider trons, uh, we can do that. I would love to see a spider tron running freakishly fast. Can you put power armor in the grid? Uh, you can put power armor things in the grid, but that's like trying to put power armor in power armor. Okay. Almost done. Let's grab our tanker. Put that here. And no liquid rocket fuel. Get this out of the way for now. Antimatter engine. There's no middle. I mean, we can't put just one of these in the middle. Uh, I don't want to use two of these, and I don't want it to be asymmetrical. I can't win. Unfortunate. Uh, it's letting me put it on scaffolding. That seems like not what I want to do, actually. Okay, so let's say we put this here. And I guess we could put a 3B here. Get rid of the floor sticking out. And that should effectively have the same footprint. Should be fine. Okay, so oh I don't have any I don't have any spaceship doors. I guess I could just build it with spaceship walls. But more to the point, it's not gonna tell us our stress, is it? Because we don't have the doors. Yeah, no. What? That looks really weird. Okay, let's not do that, actually. Alright, integrity check. And... Hull stress is 402.75. Container stress is significantly lower as well. Uh, I'm curious though, if we replace just one of these with a antimatter, but well, not the engine, uh, antimatter matter booster tank. Why do I keep pronouncing things like a New Zealander today? Uh, this goes to 50k. I'll just double check that. Yeah, 50k. So that's double. 
So it should be higher container stress if it just goes by capacity and this doesn't get some special discount. Oh? You're kidding. It did pass, right? 375 container stress. And 375 container stress. So... We get twice as much antimatter moved around if we just pay up front all of the naquitite that it's going to take to fill this up with antimatter booster tanks. Are you asking about hull stress just came in? Uh, my thing that I was wondering is if I use antimatter, specific antimatter storage tanks instead of these regular ones, uh, would the container stress, you know, do we get a discount? Uh, even though we can store f twice as much antimatter, um, do we get a discount on this or something? I thought the answer would be no, but it turns out we can actually store twice as much antimatter at no cost except for the upfront cost. Does the stress change with the amount of volume in the tanks? No, it does not. It, it, it assumes all containers are full all the time. I haven't played space exploration, but I actually just read about this recently. There's two fuels that do get half discounts. I think it's rocket fuel. Okay. So, next question is... How many would this be? Uh, if we go all out, it's 30. I've got 10. Do we have 30 antimatter booster tanks lying around? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we do. I thought I would have to scrounge for some over here or something, if we even had them, but we've actually got 40. Alrighty. So, let's make this happen. And I might change the shape of the refuel here as well. We'll see. It's booster tanks get half the integrity cost. Okay. So if you were to go from storage tank to liquid rocket fuel booster tank, because you're transporting liquid rocket fuel, uh, the whole stress is still going to go up. But that's because you're getting... Uh, Four times as much storage, even though it's half the price. That about right? Well then, uh, let's see how we can fit these together. That's pretty good. Uh, I might have to... Hey, this no longer needs a single extra bit of pipe. This is going to go here. Move this up as well. My bots are rather short range, probably because I've only got one robopod. I don't need lasers right now. Uh, I wouldn't mind some jetpack, though. Also, three hour. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, uh, this goes up here. Turn that around. This is Brad. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, let me just make sure I count exactly how many more of these we can fit. Uh, so that is 28 in total. I 
think I was expecting 30 for some reason. Probably because I was comparing it to... This one's 32. Wait. These are 3x3 three three as well. How do we not... Oh, right, because the engine is tucked in up here. Really good at the moment? Nice. Hmm. Could I, should I... See if we can have the engine sticking out a bit more? Nah, I don't want it eating up the concrete and maybe colliding with this. Let's just leave that as it is. Oh wait, it is gonna... Uh, I'm not worried about it. Alright, 28 of these is overkill, I think, anyway. This will be fine. And... Now that I look at it... Even though it's just going from Nalvis Orbit to Nalvis, because this is an antimatter engine, I'm actually a little bit scared um, that this is going to go too fast. Let's just set the speed signal. Uh, we've got four lasers. That is overkill. Anyway, I'm going to set the maximum speed at like 50. Should be fine. Also, interior area costs one integrity. Walls cost a half. Oh, so if you fill this up with walls, it actually goes down. Interesting. Okay. That's looking pretty good. Let's go get our... I'll just double check and count this again. Wait, where did my... I thought I had a blueprint for... Ghosts here? Deconstruction planner? Yeah, 18. I need another 18 booster tanks. Let's make sure we request those. Uh, yes, up to 10% is free for empty space. Which, under certain circumstances, I guess adds a premium to using up every last bit of space. Okay. This is going to be a lot of antimatter per trip, but it's going to last quite a while. I guess I should start... Requesting antimatter here, regardless. This needs to be a requester, because this will not be providing. And we're going for antimatter stream. It's going to be, I think, a little bit like with thermofluid where there's a ton of demand to make it at first, and then later on... Wow, what the heck is going on here? Well, this one's half full of thermofluid, and this one has zero? What? That is really weird. Also, these two lack signals. So anytime there's a train in here, it's blocking the roundabout, though that doesn't happen often or for long. And this one's empty as well. What? Where did all the... what? What the... Huh? Um... Not much cold thermofluid either. 
Wait, I should check this thing for cold thermo fluid. Yeah, that's actually looking fine. But cold thermo fluid itself is actually weirdly really empty here. Hmm. Yeah, every... The last hundred thousand times I've checked looking here, we've had, like, just like this. Like, it looks like we finished making thermofluid a very long time ago. But I'm actually pretty surprised to see two of these active right now. I mean, every new build we make, almost, asks for a 100k thermofluid, I suppose. Alright, where were we? Got our tanks. Where's the petroleum? There it is. And this one is going to be antimatter stream. Whoops. Antimatter shuttle. Number one, probably the only one we'll ever need. Fantastic. Oh, how much do we have here? I want to see. Launch energy. 332 gigajoules. So we're on fumes. Oh, no, wait, these ones have some more. It, it hasn't evened out. Five hundred and sixty-six. I kind of want to stop it at 800 and see how much we've got, actually. I think we calculated, like, 40,000, right? It's actually looking like that was correct. 829, okay. So... I guess we'll let that even out a bit. Or I could put some circuit wire on it so that we can read it fairly accurately. That might be a better idea. Uh-oh. Those didn't actually connect. Wait, I've got more tanks than that. What's going on? Oh, those were the engines! I requested too many engines. Oh no. Okay. Alright. Well, we only need another ten of these now. Whoops. Uh, anyway, I guess while I'm here... Well, I don't think I need to be here for that, actually. Yeah, no. Let's get my player character heading back. Okay, let's just read all of these, at least for now, and we've got 42,000, yeah, the math was correct. Okay, so if we have uh, 28 tanks... That is actually 1.4k per tank. And we know the, uh, we know the fluid can get somewhat uneven. So I think I'll, I think I'll say 2,000, just to be safe. If we read just one of the tanks to decide to launch. Okay, so if antimatter stream less than 2k, then take off and go to Nalvis. I'll set that up now, actually. Because there's definitely no harm 
that there's harm in not having the ship take off to go back for more antimatter. If it takes off a little bit prematurely, I guess we just waste some antimatter. And this is going to have to go up a tile just like we did previously. Oops. That should line up perfectly. Uh, what number is this going to be? 1006. I think these ones are. 3001, 3002, 3, 4, so this one's 3005, I believe. Whoops. Back to Nalvis Orbit. Speedy Spider is good spider. Wait, this one should already be... Nope, never mind. 3,005. Same ID on the ship and the target, just to keep things simple. Okay. And do we need anything else? Oh yeah, we need to connect um, this across like so. And for that to go to... Why does that not reach? Because it normally goes across another storage tank. Uh, we need that to connect to the spaceship console. So that we can give it commands. All right, so let's say once antimatter tank is uh, greater than 49,000 something. I guess 49,500 would mean it is 99% full. If we wait much longer than that, the pump's going to get slower and slower. I guess they do that so you don't fill the, fill the cockpit with walls, yeah. Definitely. Okay. That should be... everything, question mark? Uh, it is 14 trainloads of antimatter before this thing will auto-launch. Are we likely to get that before our ship comes back, or before it starts running low on fuel? I'm thinking maybe not, but then again, we don't have a whole lot of sinks for antimatter just yet. In fact, this is the first... Uh, the ship that we made earlier is the first fully automated antimatter sink that we've got. Uh, except for... no, that's uh, Particle Stream. Although Particle Stream practically is antimatter as far as we're concerned. With the resource drain. Oh, here's the antimatter. Why do I have... Oh, yeah, oh, right, I accidentally request... I accidentally summoned, like, an extra train of antimatter way back when. That's fine. Uh, so... Where are we making it? Particle stream is coming in... Wait, what? Output blocked. Particle stream here is full. I did have... 
Oh, I think this was for Ion. But I added some circuit control here to keep these two balanced. But that doesn't concern us here. Must not run out of antimatter. Particle stream is full. Super cooled thermo fluid? Wait, what? Train limit is one. Uh. Well. The trouble is with the shape of our drop off here. Like, I would set the train limit to 2, but this can hold exactly 200k, and we would need, with a request threshold of 100k, I guess I could drop the request threshold a little bit, so that we can request two trains at once, although... 1.2k per second, well there's your problem. So we get like, what, 40 seconds of operation from this. I would like to set it to aim for 200k and train limit is 2, but because there's always fumes in here, uh, it doesn't quite, I know what to do. Train limit 2, uh, target is 200k, except we're going to pretend, if I pretend we've got slightly less, um, thermo fluid than we actually have, then I'm counting on this little bit of extra storage that we've got. To make sure it doesn't overflow. How much can we fit in here? Uh, 1800? 2000? Should be about the same on this side. Uh, 1800 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 500. 23, 24, 2500. So about 4,500 plus the 200k. I'm going to fly really close to the sun here. We're going to request 204,000. And train limit is 2. So if it gets really, really empty, we're going to request two trains at once. And in any case, we should request... Once we're down to half, um, we should request another train anyway. The fact that we're not doing that tells me we actually don't have enough supercooled thermo fluid. Well, there's some here, but that train might be going somewhere else. Nope. That's, that's going... I looked away at the exact second that this popped, it would seem. Uh, we've got quite a bit of thermo fluid here. Not quite a train load here, I don't think. Hey, Raren. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're all having a good Friday. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so that's going to give us our antimatter a bit faster. I guess that's why the... Uh, the top row of... Particle accelerators weren't doing anything here was because the output was full. I mean, yeah, that's what we saw up here. I thought it was a throughput issue, but it's actually that we weren't consuming it. Even... Do I need to add pumps? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should definitely have a pump over here somewhere. 
Each pump adds 400 stealth storage. Um, but yeah, the... I don't know, it's weird. We're getting the thermofluid here, no problem. But with the exact symmetrical... Pretty much the exact same symmetrical layout. We're not getting thermofluid to this machine at the same time. It's literally like one more piece of pipe here and here and here and here. Could that actually be the reason? Well, whatever the case, um, as long as we bring the, uh, we are actually bottlenecked on the thermofluid itself, as long as we bring it here. We, we've got a train scheduled to come here once we drop down to 50%, so we've already got another one scheduled. How much antimatter are we making? Ideally, 600 per second. So... Almost three minutes. Let, let's call it three minutes per train load. Uh, if we don't run out of... If we don't bottleneck on making super cool thermofluid. How fast are we making it? 400 per second per block. So like 1,200 per second. Oh. So yeah, this... This thing is capable of consuming double what our entire base produces. For supercooled thermofluid. It definitely won't have to make antimatter that fast in the long run, over time. But, yeah, we're very much about to hit a wall there. Um, okay. Where is our ship? Oblong 5, I think it is. It hasn't even picked up its uh, first load yet. It's lost 2 out of 50 antimatter stream and it's almost there kind of so we can assume let's call it 3k to get here 3k to get back i think most of the fuel is going to be used getting off of nalvis maybe if we assume 10k from each tank per trip uh, it's got about five trips in it. So we need to get a 100k antimatter stream down there within... Uh, within that time frame. I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem. I, I will have to launch this early, quite possibly. But that just means a little loss of efficiency in the long run. That's just the price we pay. It's fine. Uh, so, once this tank is greater than 49k... We're actually a fifth of the way there already. Yeah, I don't actually think it's going to take that long. Alright, cool. Maybe that is all working fully automated. Don't even have to worry about it. So what are we doing now then? We've got... I, I actually forgot we've got everything set up for the Tier 2 uh, Space Science Pack. This is what I was looking for. We're going to need a whole lot more Necrotype before that happens. And I think, now that I, uh, 
Oh, we're looking for 2.5k Naquim cubes. We're going to automatically send all of the Naquitite to the mall for a while. Well, I guess we can just keep making uh, antimatter engine based ships to bring back more Naquitite. That seems as good a plan as any. It's kind of like putting all of our resources in this at the start of the game into making more mines. Kind of works out, actually. Is there anything I desperately want quickly from deep space research? Nothing that is cheap. Uh, that's for sure. Lab research productivity would be good, but it's 1600k. I guess I'll get that before the... This is 2000. Yeah, I think I'll get that immediately after Jetpack, actually. And then we'll get the tier 2. Ooh, and then we get to play with Arcospheres. Let's try one-star patterns research. One-star patterns. Do you mean, uh, like, zone discovery? Oh, this is only two... Oh, it's Deep Space 2, though. Okay, and once more with feeling. Arcosphere's incoming? Yeah. It won't be today. Maybe this week, though. They are an interesting concept. Cool. I don't think I need to be carrying this extra stuff now. Um, in in fact, I don't think I need to be carrying any spaceship stuff for the moment. Mm. I've regretted not carrying clamps before. Ah uh, yes, Arcospheres, I hope you stocked up on Combinators. Oh, don't worry. You unlocked that research when you visited Huge Wedding Ring? Uh, what was it called again? Star Mapping. Oh yeah, we need, um, we need Deep Space 2 though. Yeah, uh, do you mean Long Range Star Mapping? Also a lot of Astro, but we've got that backed up. How full are the scaffolding? Oh, wow. Very full. Very, very full. I've got their thing saved. Why don't I just... Remove everything. Trash unrequested. Oh. I need them to request robots, though. I should make a new, um, reset. Uh, remove everything, trash unrequested. Actually, no, just remove everything. Robot. A hundred. Uh, repair pack. And... That's pretty much it. And we're going to call this... Empty... Construct... Construct... How can I not type? Tron. 
Okay. Empty constructor trunk. Oh, trash unrequested. That should be... Empty construct... Trunk. I'm normally a very good typist, but not on stream. Okay, cool. And I'm going to use the scaffolding spiders to remove all this stuff. I don't think we need a new block built for a while. Probably. We've got a spare one up here, actually. The main thing about them is that it just doesn't work well until you're a bit further along. I want to see how T-Hex handles Arcospheres. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Can't seem to remember that tech from my last playthrough. Is it new? How new is it? Well, if it is new. I, I think from everything I've heard, you would probably remember Arcospheres. It would be difficult to forget them. anti to stream goes here. And you guys just about empty. Not even close. Oh, great. Wonderful. Why don't you move over close to where this scaffolding is being stored? Oh, and we're building another deep space miner. It's actually done. So this is going to be uh, oblong 6. And I guess we could send it out to... I guess we could send them out to Black Mirror as well. Does it make sense to say it would make more difference because we've got these slow ships going a long distance? Not really. I think we just keep sending them to Oblong until the mine is no long... Uh, the, uh, until the mine becomes the bottleneck. Speaking of which... Uh, why don't we add... I'll pick a dollies those back into place once we know we've got the productivity modules. Let's at least get full coverage. But with the stack size so small, I think it's going to be... It's going to take a decent number of ships before we bottleneck on the mine itself, right? What's our max rate here? Um, what the... 11.1 per second. That is a bit more than a stack, though. And then we're going to add, I think, three more mines. Uh, two more mines gives us full coverage. If that, even. Point four four, so that's like almost one more per second. So we're going to get 12 per second Necrotite. That is 120% of a stack. Uh, the ships carry how much? 28 chests, I think. that they don't use for utility stuff. Yeah, 28. So... 1,344 uh, 1, stacks at 1 1.2 stacks per second. That is... Uh, 
Is that right? It's going to finish auto-saving before it gives me the answer. The tech I meant was the distant star scanning, or whatever it was called. Distant star scanning. 11.20. Hold on. 11.20 seconds. Or we need one ship every 18.6 minutes. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of ships, actually. We're probably... Probably pretty close to bottlenecking on this mine now. I can't see properly, but I think we might have full coverage despite that beacon. Um, I don't think it's going to make a difference overall if we like make these purple chests and then put some storage here. The bots would load the ship slightly faster though. Uh, distant star scanning. Long range star mapping. We've got all the zone discoveries, right? Okay, uh, so what's next? We need to wait for this thing to warm up. Uh, 1200, oh, I should check on Oblong, oh, here it is, Oblong 5. What's your temperature? 1182. Okay, I, it literally lost like 20 degrees or something in the time that it took to get from Calidus to Oblong. It might actually beat Oblong 1. It... I think it will. Yeah, I think it's overtaking Oblong 1 with ease. Because Oblong 1 would go 30 if it weren't going through deep asteroids. 22, 24... Oh yeah, this thing's definitely about to overtake it. Such... Have you ever felt such intensity at such low speed? No, it's, it's definitely happening, and it has to... It has to get to the middle before it's considered at Oblong Lobulata. And it's crossing it. It's getting past it right now. Fantastic. What's your ETA? One minute. Okay, cool. Alright, so... I think once this thing gets to like 600, uh, let's call it 700, it should be super safe uh, to send this thing at Oblong, and it'll it'll have enough heat for both trips, because it does receive more when it gets to Oblong. Uh, I actually want to check how fast this thing is going to get given heat once it gets there. I'm sure it's going to receive more than it needs. Like, it's going to gain heat from the trip. I'm pretty sure. Three fifty-five. All right. So, what should we do while we're not just spamming new ships? We could go on some more joy rides. That seems like a good idea. Get some more of this deconstruction happening. Is this finished? Not even slightly. Why don't we just get the... Actually, no, I don't need to get the construction spiders involved in this. All I have to do 
is add a RoboPort right about here and here and here and here that one doesn't have power for some reason and that should pretty much be the end of those old builds All right, let's get out of the spooter. Figure out where we're going next. Can't wait to have 10k channel points and have my name in. Uh, name in your base, dude. Fantastic. Tugboni. Good. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm sure we have plenty of room for you still. Oh yeah, we added another block just for more names. No trouble whatsoever. Uh, actually, the bots are still moving. I should just put the spiders here for now. Oh yeah, I was thinking of making some more spiders. I, th I think just swapping the purpose of the scaffolding spiders should be fine. Let's find some new adventure. So we've been... To Vazanus, Electra, Capellus, uh, Regulus, I'm pretty sure. Doesn't even have any. Yeah, 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 we've been to Alba. I forgot to clear it. Delete surface. And this place as well. Uh, we went to Hankerus. That was just Orchard, actually. Wexavis, I think we've done. Dead Rim, yes, I've been there. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and I think... I think I did everything in Angolus, right? Been to... Renato. Crothone. Morpheus, we've been to ages ago. Uh... I should definitely phase out this glorious construction that we made at Sanj so that we don't need a ton of iridite to trade for copper. It was a fun uh, logistical challenge though. What if I go somewhere further away that we wouldn't be able to reach without our new toys? Oh, here's that waterless coal planet. Star Fury might be worth tapping into with antimatter engines if we need more coal later on. Okay. Uh, in in family. Let's go. Family. Just double check. Our fuel tanks are full. Water is full. Naturally, we've got ludicrous amounts of uranium fuel cells. Let's go. And experience the glorious acceleration of this ship once again. We're already at 60, 70, 90, 100, 115... Very, very nice. Okay. What else are we doing? Wait, what's our ETA? 42 minutes. It's probably going to be like 30. And... I should check on that antimatter tanker. It's gonna take a while for this to fill up, not surprisingly. How much is it already carrying, though? Fourteen K times twenty-eight. Uh, 
That's just under four train loads, actually. I think I'll be patient a bit longer. I should check the fuel for Oblong 5. Oh yeah, we did, actually. It's still waiting its... Wait, why is it waiting its turn? There isn't a ship here. Anchor 371. Oblong 5. 370, that's why. 371 for Oblong. Uh, so this needs to change right here. Glad I checked on it. And that means the same applies to our new ship. Which is going to be Oblong 6. How hot are we? 532? It's probably hot enough already. But let's be super safe. Give it another couple of hundred degrees. Oh, and I wanted to see... This is the perfect time for that. How fast this is gaining heat. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's not going to be a problem. If this thing got here with exactly 500 degrees left on the beam receiver, uh, it would still have no trouble getting back to Nalvis. The fastest the bots can go... ...to fill the ship up. It would still gain enough heat, probably. How many bots do we have here? 155. Oh! You know what? We haven't placed. Uh... We haven't placed any superchargers. Let's see if we're placing those two... If we could still reach everything. Oh yeah, easily. That would have been a silly thing to bottleneck on without noticing for 600 years. Do these bots... Is there no storage chest? I think there's no storage chest. Uh, do you even... There's literally no storage chest in this entire place. Okay, I might swing by Oblong. We're heading in the same direction anyway. We haven't even left the solar system yet. Yeah, I was actually going to go to here. It's almost in precisely the same direction. Alright. Good timing. I'll bring the storage chest that I'm always carrying. How's our power look? All those green curvy dips are where the shield has been hit. Three times so far. Cool, cool, cool. And are you guys full? You guys are very full. Where did you get Adaptive Armor Mark 1 from? Send them back to the mall. If I want to port all of this stuff to using spaceships. I've got a lot of stuff ahead of me. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, plus eight, seventeen, twenty-one. Uh, probably approaching forty to fifty cargo rockets. 
that I need to replace with spaceships. That is at least seven. And then I need to recycle all the old uh, space capsules and such. There's a block here that takes things back to Nalvis as well. Including space capsules. Right, what's our ETA? Ten minutes? Uh, Alright, this thing's not going to auto land. It'll require my attention anyway. But I think this is where I'll put the storage chest regardless. And I think it's about time for a break. Waiting on a couple of things anyway. Alright, let's fire up the old screensaver. Put the words on the stream. And... Uh, start the autopilot in 30 seconds. All right, back in a few.
I know. Sigma B, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, how'd you guys do? Uh-oh, I can't. There we go. Skip three levels, nice. All right, I thought since we've not got too much longer left on today's stream, uh, let's see if we can speed build a solar-only ship that's going to go interstellar. I'm skeptical, but let's try. So, first of all, it's got to be antimatter because liquid rocket fuel isn't going into Stellar. I mean, maybe if it was, if the ship was nothing but liquid rocket fuel storage, possibly. Uh, but then we'd probably just run out of uh, power even quicker. Word still visible? Uh, thanks, good call. Uh, so, we're going to go for Naquim solar panels, of course. I assume, uh, I, I assume accumulators are permissible for this challenge. Zimultus, thank you for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And how was your stream today? Welcome, raiders. Uh, okay, let's add... So the, the flat solar panels are pretty much going to be useless as soon as we leave the solar system, even if they're tier 3. Unless... It's... it's uh, I think it's 16 kilowatts per solar, sis, uh, solar panel in deep space. So yeah, even the minimum consumption... 33... Wait, wait, wait. 33 kilowatts each. 1.6 megawatts times 1%. Uh, 16. Yeah, 16 kilowatts, right? So if we have three solar panels, we can just barely move with an antimatter engine. I think. Interstellar solar only won't work, I think. Power will be consumed too fast. Lasers and shields. Yeah, my my idea is if we go slow enough, uh, I think we don't have to shoot down anything. Uh, we may as well go over the top with fuel storage. And get some spaceship walls in here. If this works out the way that I think it does, we might actually not need that big of a ship. I was gonna maybe I I, I don't think we can realistically get very far on accumulator charge. But I'm really surprised if my calculations are correct. Um, I'm really surprised at how far we might... Well, not how far. We could go indefinitely if we just go slow enough with, um, with flat solar panels. I guess we can like we usually do, just control the speed based on the accumulator, so we can uh, slow down... I've got a better idea. Well, we'll still do that, but rather than... rather than have any lasers, uh, why don't we have some gun turrets? Requested chests, or a requested chest. 
we just need this to get out of the solar system at a rate of faster than excruciatingly slow. Hmm, that 400 watts though. Now we're getting 16 kilowatts from each flat solar panel, so 33.3 kilowatts here, another 400 gets us up to 34 basically. 35, 36, 37 kilowatts. And we're going to be using uranium ammo. I could, uh, I, I could use burner inserters if we really want to. Maybe I should. Yeah, let, let's, let's, let's do it. Every, every what counts. Uh, we're going to request... Mostly bullets and some, you know what? Nuclear fuel. Wait, what? Oh, that only left three st They overfilled it by 88? Really? That's kind of a lot. Uh, how about... 200 times 40 stacks is 8,000. Whoops. Didn't want to take it off the top. Oh no, I can't control click this. No. There we go. Get this out of my inventory. Thank you. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of nuclear fuel, actually. And then... Burner inserters? I imagine three gun turrets. Well, especially if we limit our speed, three gun turrets is actually probably pretty good. With the uranium bullets. I don't like the asymmetry, but what can we do? That should definitely be streamlined. Accumulators have awful energy storage density. Yeah, I don't think the accumulators are really going to count for anything, even with this many of them. But we can at least use them uh, to tell us how fast we should or shouldn't go. I imagine these things can handle the asteroids at 100 speed. I could be wrong. Okay. If not, I'll just manually change how fast we're going. Streamline is only 90%? What? The entire thing is... Oh, I think this is why. Maybe. might have something to do with it. Yep. Do you happen to know how much energy is in a 25k tank filled with 5,000 degree steam? Uh, I did calculate it once, but I don't know it off the top of my head. We get, a th we get one gigawatt for consuming about a thousand per second. So you could probably get a pretty good idea from that. Uh, is this it? Do we need anything else? 
let's let's try going somewhere. Uh, so we're just going for the shortest interstellar trip we can get. So let's go for Alphorus. Alphorus. Alphorus orbit. Go. And we're probably going to go a little too fast for comfort. Oh wow, that took like one bullet. What's our damage? Uh, physical projectile damage 53. That might make it a little too easy. Um, let's... Let's... Wait, 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 what? Editor. Let's crank that down to something a bit more reasonable. Let's say, in parity with what we could have when we have antimatter engines and not much else. Uh, why don't we just... Unresearch that. Alright, so this is Material Science 4. Oh, we can't just insta-research. You know what? Let's just try with that. We've got tier 8. If anything, we're working off of a handicap here. It's better for a proof of concept. Oh, that was close. How fast are we going? 100. Accumu yeah, that makes sense, because accumulated charge hasn't dropped yet. They are actually just barely managing with the uh, the big asteroids. All right, uh, I guess let's see if we get out of the solar system with this, or if we get two asteroids coming in at the same time that are chunky that hit our walls. Looks like it. Looks like it's okay actually. Ooh, that was close. That was very close. We're consistently almost getting hit. Okay, I need to see where we are. Uh, we're already out of the solar system. Okay, accumulated charge. Okay, we have 16 kilowatts per solar panel. What's happening? Accumulator charge should be dropping a lot faster than this. Alright, we, we took damage. I'm going to reduce the speed. Uh, instead of circuit wire, we're just going to set an arbitrary speed target here. I'm actually in extremely surprised how long the accumulators are lasting. I thought these would be empty by now, even though we've got a lot of Nacrium accumulators. Well then, I don't think we're going to have any trouble making an interstellar trip this way. How about we remove the accumulators? Because that's what we really want to see, like, how possible this is. Because if all we had was... What if we even see... Hold on, if I, if I go Holmium, that's 8, 16... I think we would need more solar panels. What are we at now? 96 kilowatts out of 1.1 megawatt. Oh yeah, the minimum consumption. Uh, I guess it doesn't actually matter. What's our speed? Windling rapidly. Uh, actually, yeah, let's leave that where it was. 
or something like this, I guess. Uh, it's not dwindling as far. Scale the summit. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello. Uh, I think... I think if I used Holmium... Oh, I can't double it. We've got nine. What's that give us? 72 kilowatts. We're still moving. We're moving rather slowly, but... We're moving. We're moving fast enough that the gun turrets still need to shoot things down. I'm pretty sure if we go slow enough, there's nothing to shoot down. Once this thing disappears, probably. No, I'm a little bit wrong about that. By which I mean totally wrong. If we were to try to do this with a laser turret... I'm get... The laser turret wouldn't even be able to fire. Right? It's not like it would... Oh. It is slowly charging. It's taking all the power, so we're not even moving now. Uh, let me just delete all of this. Okay, so does it even... What's our speed? Surprisingly high, we're, go we're up to six. Laser turret to front and center. We are hooning along at six units a second. And I think we're going to crash. Unless we set the speed extremely low. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to... Use up all its energy shooting down, um, shooting down a, a meteorite, or is it asteroid? Asteroid. Um, and then another one is going to crash into it before it recharges. But with gun turrets, definitely. Yeah, you can, you can make an interstellar voyage with, uh, Nothing but solar. Well, there you have it. Time to raid someone, I think. Let's see who's streaming Factorio. Charity week. Uh, why don't we drop in on... Hofnix. Hofnix, indeed. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you like, if you have any questions or anything by all means. And uh, coming up on Monday or uh, Sunday for a lot of you, I suppose, uh, we're going to be doing something special. Uh, I'm aiming for quite possibly a very long stream with different games, integration, all sorts of things. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But for now, let's drop in on Hofnix. Take care, guys. And begin. Let's uh, start the countdown. 90. 
Tyrannosaurus Hex, thank you for the raid. Hello everyone. Welcome to Warptorio. My uh, third 12 hours of uh, this week. Doing some uh, extra streaming for charity. Hope to get at least a uh, rocket launch today <laughs> on this map. If we put as a little goal for ourselves that to uh, get all the non-infinite research done. That'd be nice. It's Sunday! It is, Valak, it is. Let's look, Valak, well, the webcam's getting bigger. I should move the webcam, actually. Well, to get all non-infinite...